Offense is defined as the means or method of attacking or of attempting to score. In sports, the method is often different, but the outcome, when successful, is the same. Defense is the capability of resisting attack. In athletics, the resistance is attained through a concentrated, focused effort. In college football, the Clemson Tigers feature a defense that led the nation against the run. In fact, no one has rushed for the magical 100-yard mark against the Tigers in 38 games. The California Golden Bears showcase Russell White, the only Cal running back to put together back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Quarterback Mike Koloski spearheads the Cal attack, one of the highest scoring teams in all the land. The 1992 Florida Citrus Bowl matches great offense against great defense. the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, where we start a day of great college football on ABC. It's the champions of the ACC, the Clemson Tigers, against the California Golden Bears of the Pac-10. And the Clemson seniors voted unanimously to break out the purple jerseys, the first time in the history of the school that they will wear a color other than orange or white in a bowl game. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger. For California, what a Cinderella year it's been. And for the first time since 1959, the Golden Bears are playing on New Year's Day. They have brought 7,000 of their fans down here to Central Florida. Of course, Clemson's so much closer, there'll be more than 20,000 of the Tiger backers on hand today. Let me introduce you to the two quarterbacks. We're going to be talking about these two fellows all day long. Mike Pulaski of California on the right, he has thrown 21 touchdown passes this season. Yes, he will wear the eye shield. Over on the left, Deshaun Cameron, more of an option type. But the Tigers have won 85% of their games since he became the starter three seasons ago. Now a matchup that will go a long way for determining the outcome of the game. On the left, that's Troy Ozeen. He's an All-American tackle out at Cal. Folks, he has not allowed a sack this year, but he's up against the monster today. 350-pound Chester McLaughlin, who a year ago teed off on Illinois on the first play of the game, forced a fumble, that set the stage, Dick Vermeil, for a 30 nothing round. It is going to be tough going for Cal's offense. Well, that today. McLaughlin's not the only big 300-pounder they have in that defense. They have defense to run so well this year. In fact, they've done it better than any college defensive football team has done it in the last 21 years. Now, they're matched up against a very well-balanced offense. That, but their problem is they've only been successful when they've been able to both run and pass. So I look for Cal maybe to, to open up passing the ball and gradually blend in the running game. Dick, who has to step up big for Cal today? Well, Russell White, their All-American running back, we've seen him play twice, and he hasn't played like an All-American. He has to do it today. So the Clemson Tigers will go for their sixth consecutive bowl victory against the Golden Bears of California. Coming up on ABC. Sean Cameron showing you what transpired inside that Clemson locker room just moments ago. Off came the orange jerseys that they warmed up and on with the purple. So for the Clemson Tigers today, it will be the purple gang as Coach Ken Hatfield went back in the history of the school and found out that purple and orange are their actual colors. And he thought that the orange had become too dominating over the last couple of decades. So Suave to kick it off here for Clemson as California will get the ball with the first possession. The Tigers won the toss and they deferred to the second half. Russell White, number four, the key man, remember, and Lindsey Chapman, his backup at that running back spot. Underway at the Citrus Bowl, this is Chapman. To the middle of the field, smacked at the 22-yard line. And that's where Pulaski will put it in play as Paul Caputo, a backup fullback, comes ripping in to make the stop. 
So Pulaski is a he's a firebrand type youngster. He wears his emotions out on his sleeves. He'll lift a team up. And he has thrown a record 21 touchdowns. Russell White, he's the key man. Greg Zomod will have to be a protector today. Brian Treggs and Sean Dawkins, extremely talented. And we'll get a look at Troy Ozine, number 52. And on first down against the Blitz, he drops off a screen pass. He hits Zomalt, the fullback, with the first play of the game, a bit of a wrinkle for 16 yards. See, they're going to want to take a little heat off that pass rush right away. That's why I said look for him to throw the ball early in the game, get those defensive linemen chasing and running, and then come with the running game. Dick, what about the matchups up there in the line? How much help will Ozine and the fellas need against these big defensive linemen? Ozine will be blocking one-on-one -on -one in the passing game all along on those big people. White's first carry for a couple of yards against this defense. McLaughlin making his first stop of the game, wearing number 91. And he actually weighed in down here at closer to 350 pounds. And look at Buckner. He goes at 315. In that secondary, number 15 is the young man to keep an eye on. Robert O'Neill, one of the better free safeties in America, lined up back there in center field now, shading over to the right. So Pulaski trying to get it straight with his tight end, Brent Woodall, wanting him over on the left. California again throwing the ball to the underneath. It was Woodall for a first down. The tight end reaching midfield, and we will see for certain where they spot the ball, but he appeared to have first down yardage. You know, right now they have Buckner over on the right offensive side rather than on the left offensive side. They're probably going to move him around so they can't double him up because he is that big power rusher. They throw a little delay as the zone linebackers drop out effective for the first down. Now, here's what California's thoughts are as far as the passing game is concerned. Coach Bruce Schneider wants to open it up early and then come back with the running game in the second half. A bit of a wrinkle. Throws to a diving receiver on first down for no more than a yard. That's Zomalt, his fullback, who has become very active as a receiver here early. He has, and again, getting back to echo what you were talking about, Brent, if they can get those big linemen running and rushing the passer and chasing the screens and, and the wide outside running plays, they think they can tire them out just enough so then they can run against them more effectively in the second half. Dick, what's happening up front right now as far as the offensive line of Cal is concerned? Right now, the defense is moving them around, so there's no pattern right now. And that play, of course, they just got whipped on that trap play. Well, there, McLaughlin and his buddies, and they have not allowed an opponent running back to get 100 yards in the last 38 games at Clemson. They are so tough against the run. Here's the matchup. Here he is going underneath Pod Stucy. See, the problem with the, him is if you get off center on a man that powerful, he will turn your body and go right on through it. You've got to stay in front of it. Third and 10, Pulaski with a penalty flag thrown, fires back across the green, and it is Zomalt again, who is ripped down by Kinzel Jackson at the 43. Penalty flags on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and our referee is Lloyd Dale with the Southwest Conference crew. I think they lined up on chatter down on the sideline indicating they may have lined up offside Ken Hatfield the head coach at Clemson and this gives you an idea as White has rushed for better than 2,000 yards at Cal averaging five yards a carry and Clemson's opponents only 1.9 California balances the attack and they're getting it done for coach Bruce Snyder with the pass here in the early moments of this game and exactly what he told us they were going to do Steve Mariucci, uh, the fine offensive coordinator from Cal, said this is their plan. Get those big guys running, wear them out a little bit, then attack them a little bit more with the direct running game. All right, now with the penalty, the ball is moved to the Clemson 45-yard line. It is third and five. California has passed for 26 yards and has run for zero in two carries. Pulaski straight back, had time, throws for the first down. Jackson making the stop at the 40-yard line on the wide receiver, Sean Dawkins. 
Brent, you already noticed that they aren't holding the ball for a long time to throw the ball. That was a delay underneath. It didn't take very long to get it. They get just what they need. It looks or appears to be the first down, but they're not going to hold on to the ball for a long time. Sean Dawkins is one of the big play standouts. Pulaski likes to find him, especially in one on one coverage. But here early against this Clemson defense, they're not even looking for the long pass. They are trying to keep it underneath five, six yard. Quick strikes for Snyder, who is recognized now as one of the coming coaching powers as far as college football, and who knows, perhaps someday even back in the NFL, as he was on John Robinson's staff for the Los Angeles Rams before he went to Cal. Nobody in college football has done a better job than this guy has done at rebuilding California. And the Golden Bears with a first out the 40. Here comes the reverse and a throw back to Pulaski. The citrus play comes early. Russell White's got it. They put it in especially for this game and they named it the Citrus. It's back to Pulaski to White right for 26 yards. Yard. You'll see the reverse happen the as he comes back left. on the eye toss and then it'll be flipped back. Now it's, it's great to run the reverse off your best running backs play. See now they're going to flip it back. Now he flips it back to the running back rather than to a receiver. Boy that's tough on the defense. First person I think ever to run that kind of play from what I understand was Paul Brown. Pulaski is five for five passing for 57 yards. You think you throw early down here inside that 15. They haven't been able to run against this line. They're going to put it up right away. Exactly. Why wait? Incomplete. And Tyrone Muzan blitzing that time. Number 47 applies the pressure. Those kind of plays break the discipline of your defense, Brent, and that's what happened there. No one accounted for the back that originally had the ball. You see the blitz coming from the right side of your screen, then bang to the left side of your screen. Russell White doing a good job of pass protection on the right, not a good job on pass protection to the left. Cal's been successful inside the 20, as you can see. So Chapman checks in at running back. Three wide receivers. They're going to throw again, and he has to fire it fast to Triggs. Triggs for the end zone and close. Inside the two-yard line and down. But that will give California a first and goal. And now perhaps one of the big backs can muscle in for the Bears. That was the old Rocket Ishmael Notre Dame middle screen. Flanker coming from the left side of your screen. They get the rush upfield. They set it. Now watch. He's going to draw the rush. You see how coming from the inside, he gets the blocks upfield by his offensive lineman. Ozine gets a kick out. There's the hole toward the goal line. And a timeout being called by Clemson's defense. So we'll take a break and come right back to Orlando, Florida. Undefeated Washington goes after the national crown when they meet Heisman winner Desmond Howard and Big Ten champ Michigan. It's the Rose Bowl today on ABC Sports. Mike Pulaski wearing that protective shield, which he thinks helps him when he looks in one direction. The defensive backs cannot pick up his eye movement. He's off to a wonderful start here. Passing against this Clemson defense. Big Chester McLaughlin has already taken himself out once, but he's back on the field for goal line. First and goal, up over the top, they go for the touchdown. Touchdown, California as Clemson gives up a score on its opening drive for the fifth time this year. That's a lot against that defense. So they, they did it with finesse football. Now, some people think you are uh, being negative or critical of an offense when you say finesse, but that's, you don't want to sit in there and punch these great big guys. You want to move the ball around the perimeter, get it there different ways, screens, reverses, reverse throwbacks, these type of things, and Cal, you have to give them credit. Very good job. Doug Bryant, non-scholarship athlete. He'll get a full ride in January, and he deserves it. Adds the extra point. And California moves to an early touchdown lead on Clemson. And a splendid game plan here. No question about what they're doing with that quick drop, short passes, keeping that defense off balance. Throwing the ball in front of the linebackers and the trip plays. The problem with that is pretty quick you run out of it. And then you have to play football. But they feel by doing this early, they can wear that big defense down just a little and then go ahead and run the football like they'd like to run the football. 
Here you see here, Cal has outscored their opponents 102 to 48 in the first quarter this season. I think Bruce Snyder's exposure at coaching with the Los Angeles Rams under John Robinson and all that has really helped him open up his offensive thinking. There isn't anything he won't try to do with the football. Right now, they pass seven times and run three times for their first touchdown. So they run it in for the game's first touchdown. Moving 76 yards, 10 plays, three and a half minutes. Here's where I think the other problem exists now, Brent, is Clemson offense. If Cal's defensive front can hold up because they really come off the ball and nail you. Larry Ryan's the speedster, number 20. Back deep. And Ryan ready to kick it off. Ryan's from the eight. 25 to the 31 yard line. Clemson will have their first possession behind Deshaun Cameron. Cameron getting final instructions from the sideline. Young man with 85% in the W column in three years. Just call him a winner. Rodney Blunt operating at that tailback spot behind big Rudy Harris. Ryans and Terry Smith are the wide receivers. Jeff Flesh, number 59. Fine guard. And we'll see if Clemson elects to bring the option here early. Against this gambling Cal defense, it's the fullback, Rudy Harris. Eight carries on first down. Defensively, a couple of unfamiliar names who will start. The regulars there missed a practice back in Berkeley, but they will be on the field here soon, perhaps even the second series of the game. David Wilson, standout free safety, number 25 for Cal. On second down, Cameron off a of fake is going to throw his first pass. He's under pressure. Incomplete. It'll be third down. And number 47, Paul Joyner applying pressure on the quarterback. Mac Travis, number 58, Cal's best defensive nose guard into the right side of your screen on All-American. Jeb Flesh, 59, they're fighting the battle. That's going to be a battle that they're going to have all game. See, this is an intense war. Two talented players. Keep fighting there, Jeb. You aren't going to let him get involved, are you? Atta boy. <laughs> <laughs> Flesh in front of Cameron on this third down. Intercepted or was it incomplete? Incomplete on the diving attempt by Zomal down here. That was close to being picked off under desperation as two Cal Rushmen were all over Cameron. You know, that time Matt Tra uh, Travis won the battle and he got in there along with Shidiana to uh, number 72 to put pressure on the quarterback. You know, you're going to win some and lose some, but you can see Chidi on a Hanatu, number 72, getting in there and there's the ball. Oh, real close. California scores on its first possession, and for Clemson, Ooh, it is punt. three downs and punt. Brian Treggs driven back to the 15-yard line. Running to the right, finds an alley and a hole, and Brian Treggs dances to the 48-yard line. The punter, Chuck Lynch, able to bring him down. A 33-yard return after a 51-yard punt. Wonderful start for California. These beautiful blimp shots are coming to us from the airship Shamu. That airship is a goodwill ambassador for SeaWorld right here in the Orlando, Florida area. You know, before that punt, only 18 of Lynch's 50 punts had been returned. But what a return that was. Greg Zobalt, the running back, Velosky being chased by McLaughlin, who yanks him down at the 35. Big Chester ran over him like a 16-wheeler. That shows you how mobile and the talent that this man has at 352 pounds. Maybe it's true. Maybe he has run under five flat. Here he is to the right side of your screen, number one. See, no one blocking him. They're going to peel back on him and try to knock him off there. They couldn't get the peel back block. 
Steve Gordon was there just a step late. What I find interesting in this set is that they have moved McLaughlin away from Troy Azim. He came free on the other side, a 13-yard loss. Pulaski standing tall, hit Zumwalt the fullback, and Clemson with Ed McDaniel, number 93, starting to deliver the hardware. See, he came clean, Brent, because they were trying to run a sucker play over there. They pulled the lineman away from him, trying to get him to chase, and then they were going to whip back and block him from the backside. It didn't work. So North Carolina State moves ahead in the second half. Syracuse jumps out big on Ohio State. They like to run quick traps a lot of times in this situation. Not Third and long, dropping to White underneath. And White to midfield with Bob Bodine, a talented nose man. Ron Dickerson. 99, a walk on from the state of North Dakota. Ron Dickerson, the defensive coordinator for Clemson said that he hasn't faced a team all year that screens so efficiently as Cal has. They don't see that many screens and the variety in the ACC. Clemson's defense played much more aggressively in that series than they did in the opening series. Whatever Dickerson had to say to them on the sideline was very effective <laughs> and if they made any tactical changes but it just seemed to be a little bit different effort. Now Cal will punt. Noonan's left footed punt. Fielded on the run by Stevens. And Darnell down at the 21 yard line. A one yard run as Cal's excellent punt coverage keeps that ball down by the 20. Hello, everyone. This is Bruce Snyder, head football coach at Cal. This is the football coaching staff. And from all of us from the University of California, we want to wish you a happy New Year. And for all those Bear fans out on the West Coast, coming up on 11 o'clock, in case you just joined us, your Bears scored with their first possession. They lead Clemson 7 0. Clemson on the toss now with Blunt cutting back to the middle of that defense and getting to the 29 yard line before safety David Wilson is forced to make the tackle. That is absolutely critical for Clemson. They will try to get their running backs into that Cal secondary. You'll see eight defensive players bunched up at the line of scrimmage and they'll try to make their way through that gambling defense of Coach Snyder's. Kent Bear, the defensive coordinator for Cal said it's imperative that they do a real good job on first down and prevent the second and twos and threes. They didn't do it that time. Cameron uses Blunt on a power play. They use the fullback to isolate on a blocker and Blunt hammers for a first down. Sean Eshelman making the stop for California. Rodney Williams was the number one tailback coming into the season. He suffered a knee injury warming up prior to the North Carolina State game. Re-injured the knee later in the year, and so Ronald Williams not able to go, and Rodney Blunt steps in. Ken Hatfield says he is a very much team-oriented player, and they really like his performance this year. First down. Cameron has time, throws, and it was dropped. Wide receiver dropped the ball. That's Dwayne Bryant, number one, and he probably should have had this one. See, it's just a simple short sprint out. Stop pattern in the slot. He's going to sprint to the right side of your screen. Two pass protector. Chidi Ahanatu, number 72, got his hands up, but not high enough to deflect it. There it is. See, you've got to reach for the ball. and Don't let it always hit your pads. You've got to reach out and draw it to your body. He did not do that. Cameron was the MVP of the Tigers' win a year ago over Illinois. They beat the Illini 30 to nothing over in Tampa. Here he is sprinting down, keeping it on the option, and he is popped at 37. Ryan Perry there defensively, and now a little tussle breaks out after the play. Keep your poise, guys. This is the load option, meaning they're going to pull the guard to the right side of your screen. They see him pull. The fullback's going to lead. He's not faking to anybody. He just see they're trying to block the people and take the quarterback. Wilson coming inside out did a good job, and so did didn't get that last number there. But they did a good job of stringing that out. I'm surprised they haven't run more options to the to this point. I think, I think that was Ryan Perry there. Was that the Ryan Perry? A year ago, Cameron was 14 of 19 
for 141 yards and two touchdowns against the Illini. He is finding that going a little bit tougher against this very aggressive California defense. He is 0 for 3 so far this afternoon against the Bears. The ball is at the 37 with this third down. He needs to get up to the 42 yard line. Firing and way out in front of Ryan's that time. So Cameron starts 0 of 4 and Clemson forced the punt again. Remember what coordinator Larry Vander Hayden said about Deshaun Cameron. He says he's got to start out good because if he starts out good and gets hot, boy, we really play better. If he struggles early, it usually takes him a while to get going. See, he had a man open then. When you have a man open, you've got to get it to him. Brian Trigg set to return this punt for California. Another beautiful punt. Remember, he had a spectacular return. It's almost punting too strong, isn't it? Cut back into the middle and a nice tackle by Ashley Shepard, number 96, pulls him down there. So Pulaski in California will have the ball coming out from the 18-yard line. What surprises you so far on this one, Dick? Well, I, uh, you know, everybody has a game plan, and you prepare and prepare and prepare, and you, you get so much time to prepare for a bowl game like this. But normally, most things don't work as well as that first series did for Cal. You know, usually you get a thing or two stuffed in your game plan initially. For Cal, good planning, it all worked. There are some rumors circulating about Coach Snyder's future. Even heard the dreaded words Arizona State mentioned by someone down here this week. So when you get to be successful, as he is, the rumors will start. Pulaski back, firing completed Dawkins. Dawkins popped after a nine-yard gain. Wayne Simmons there defensively for the Tigers. See, they get Clemson thinking run on first down. They throw the football. This will be a pattern I think we'll see most of the first half. Clemson is liable to change up, though, and get right in. See, they're going no huddle right now. They're not going to let him breathe. Holly and Chapman, the running backs, but Pulaski on second and one is going to try to get it all. Dawkins one-on-one, -on -one, throws cut, but out of bounds. Wow, that would have been something. Dawkins is their big play receiver. We've had the opportunity to broadcast two Cal games, and we've seen him make the big play. See that ball throwing just a little too far to the outside. Got to keep that more inside, and he tries to stay inside the ball himself as a wide receiver. Now on third and one, they can come back with a Russell White run or even use Zomalt. They can feature him. What's Don't be impressive surprised. so far is the California offensive line is not allowing much of a pass rush. Pulaski fumble on the snap, picks it back up and battles down in the middle. There is the best of Mike Pulaski trying to correct a mistake. He didn't just fall on the ball. He said, let's take on a couple of defensive players, and a penalty flag comes flying. What happens on a play like that, Brent, as many times you're going to go on a quick count. And someone else hey, makes a noise, even a defensive signal, and it just doesn't get up there cleanly because they snap it just a little off rhythm. That time it looked like it was snapped through Pulaski's arms. They're coming over to the sideline to tell Coach Ken Hatfield that this may have been a personal foul against Clemson. Personal foul. And I see 89 coming off over here on the sideline. That's Brenston Buckner. We'll get a check downstairs and see if he's been ejected from this game. I visited with him in the. He's uh, walking back to ball. Personal foul. Defense. Player ejected. Yes, indeed. Woo. He's going off. Now, Buckner would have been matched against Ozine in that switch. There's the right arm delivering what appeared to be a blow in that huddle as we rock it back and forth. And he rocked that, and we'll see it on this replay. Here it is right there, and Buckner is gone. Boy, that's a big loss. Now on first down, Dawkins. And respect from Tony Mooney on that side. And here's a receiver you don't want to be off of too far because he will eat you up. That's 11 more yards. Pulaski to Dawkins. 
What a start for the Bears. Again, no huddle. They're going quick. They're gonna they're gonna try to drain some energy out of that 300 pound front. They just drained one guy quick. He's in the locker room. And I don't think that's typical of Brenton Brenton Buckner's personality at all. Kirkland is picked up, firing again to the sideline. So Brenton Buckner ejected from the game. He's finished for the afternoon. I had a chance to visit with him the other day. He was really excited about playing against Russell White, but just out of respect, he said he's a great back, and I'm I'm fired up about having the opportunity to try to tackle him. Okay. Meanwhile, back on the field, it's this offensive line of Cal. That is done now. Kirkland gets in coming and he got the pass off anyway to Treggs. Ryan Treggs with 36 straight games with a catch and another big play for the Bears, a 12 yard game. I think Ron Dickerson, the defensive coordinator from Clemson, is going to have to come up with some double zone coverages and roll up on these corners and, and get out of those one on one situations because these kids play catch all year round in California, you know. Pulaski is 12 of 14 for 124 yards against this defense in the early going. Kirkland backside still gets it off complete again. Caldwell and a penalty flag thrown. Penalty flag thrown back at the 42 yard line. We talked about how they might go back to the running game in the second half. They might just stick with his passing game. <laughs> well, in that. The no huddle thing prevents him from substituting people in there, too. I think they call roughing the passer. Here's Pulaski, number nine, middle of your screen, short sprint out, good block right there by Holly, number five. Here they're going to come in. Oh, yeah, they hit him right there in the back after he threw the ball. LeVon Kirkland, number 44, and David Davis, number 97. Yeah, Kirkland Not initiated smart. the contact. He pushed him in, and yeah. Davis couldn't avoid it. No, I know. That, they're really calling this closely. Holly and Chapman, the running backs, and Clemson reeling on defense. With a first and goal earlier, Pulaski threw it. Let's see if he does the same here. He will. Fade pattern taken away. Bullets to the end zone, incomplete. Mooney with coverage there for the Tigers. He'd have been better off throwing that out of the back of the end zone, Brent. That was a risky throw. He had pressure on him there. Al Richard was there. Tight coverage on it. You shouldn't take a chance when you're leading like this. That's the competitive spirit in this young man. Marvelous start for Pulaski in the Citrus Bowl. See, the other thing you coach a quarterback in these situations, you're already in short field goal range. Don't take a sack. Get it out of the back of the end zone. This is the eighth pass in nine plays on this drive. But he won't get it off. He's sacked at the 14-yard line. Here's Chester McLaughlin along with Al Richard. Again, he could not throw the ball right when he wanted to throw the ball. Now, Pulaski, number nine, middle of your screen, coming back. See, he's going to look to the left. He wants to throw. He can't throw. He can't throw. He's holding on to the ball. Here comes Big Chester. And there's Richard on the other side. What a sandwich they made out of him that time. There's 300 pounds on each side. Well, Troy Ozine at left tackle is simply not matching up with McLaughlin. They have moved him to the other side. Now, let's see where Chester's going to come. He's going to come down on Ozine. This time, Chester's going to take on the All-American. Ozine went down in the back, helped pick him up. McLaughlin comes free, deflected incomplete. Wayne Simmons defending Sean Dawkins that time. And the field goal unit with Doug Bryan trots onto the field. Bryan struggled for Coach Snyder against Stanford in the big game at the end of the season out of the Pac-10. He also had not kicked well in practice, according to the coach. So this is a big moment for California. Pulaski will put it down at the 21. It's a 31-yard attempt by Bryan. He's 7 for 11 from this distance this year. On its way and good. So you can surmise that the Buckner penalty cost his Clemson team a three-point field goal. Cam 
draw a conclusion because you don't know what would have happened after the play even if he hadn't been kicked out but the penalty certainly moved the ball down the field well well this is just the start of a huge triple header on ABC the big one Washington against Michigan Cal fans those in the Midwest really eager to see this year's Rose Bowl then later another team with the national championship argument the Florida Gators will play the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the USF and G Sugar Bowl so it's the Rose the Sugar Bowl still to come here today on ABC you know Brent I have felt all along that Washington was the best team in the country but I really believe Michigan has improved so much through the year that it's going to be one heck of a battle and it could it could go in favor of Michigan. Well here it is gone all California scoring a touchdown on a 76 yard drive then coming back with a 31 yard Brian field goal coach Snyder and the Bears leading 10 to nothing who would have sunk it? Yeah I wouldn't have I I look for Larry Vander Hayden the offensive coordinator for Clemson to come out and run the option running game because Cal doesn't see that but once a year in the Pac-10 at the Oregon State they were the only and Oregon State made over 200 yards running one of the differences when you look at the two teams Clemson does not have that standout big play performer who can get you right back into the middle of this ball game. They're very efficient, especially defensively, and they can grind it out. But now is the kind of game when you look for someone to bust a 60 or 70 yard play and you're just not sure if you can find the right person on the Clemson team. Something to think about here as this one continues. Deshaun Cameron has to come up with the big plays. They've said that all along, and it's true, both in the option game and in the passing game. And he's probably down a little bit mentally because he's not throwing the ball successfully here in the early going. And he had one dropped. Ryan hammers the ball to Easton at the two-yard line. Oh, short of the 20-yard line. So Cal making all the plays is Scott Roseman. Number 43 whips the return man there short of that 20. Good kickoff coverage and California looks real sharp here in Florida. It's the first time that California's ever played a bowl game in Florida. And Cameron's 0 for 4 so far and trailing by 10 points. Well, Coach Hatfield from Clemson said the quarterback with a hot hand will direct the winner. And that hot quarterback so far has been Pulaski. The toss to Blunt. Blunt spins out to the 24 yard line. See, Cal plays an eight-man front, meaning eight people up the defense to run, and they play a three-deep secondary, some of it man-to-man. -man. If you run the option, it eliminates some of the man-to-man -man coverage. You'll see the eight people right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's another one out here to the right side of your screen. Eight people. The fullback, Harris, into the middle of that defense. Nothing going. Mick Barsala is now back in the game. He did not start. He's been their starting linebacker all year. Pasadena City College JC transfer. Fine player. Honorable mention all packed in. You know, I think he's one of those guys that would go bungee jumping. You know, he's, he's a reckless, yes. abandoned type player. Yes, there were several players. We get a chance. We'll show you that video. Who did take that 200-foot leap. A little bungee activity down here in Central Florida. Third down. The blitz was coming. Cameron has one on one, looks for the big play, and it's incomplete. Terry Smith matched up on the outside, had a step. Ian Cameron could not connect. So it is three and out for Clemson again. See, that tight coverage forces you to throw the ball right on the money. And, and Deshane Cameron came into this ball game in the 70 of it, completing 70 of his last 115 passes. So he came in with a real hot streak. He's got to get hot. Well, now it's the Clemson defense or the Hunt defense team searching for the big play. Under pressure, he did just get that one off the track. Beautiful punt, though. California now dictating the game as Triggs finds an alley on the left. Triggs bus free. Brian Triggs returns a punt for a touchdown. There are no penalty flags. The Golden Bears go up by three scores on the 72-yard punt return by Triggs.
You'll see here, this was a good punt. It should have been able to be covered. Some Clemson players were really not sprinting to get in coverage, and then they overran the football. Didn't come to balance, as you see right there. Now there's a little block right there, and he goes ahead and takes them down the sideline. Not blinding speed, good elusive runner. Longest kick punt return of his career. He came into the game with a 35-yarder being the longest. That was the biggest and the longest. Doug Bryan adds the extra point. We're still in the first quarter, and California leads it 17 to nothing. Watch him set this up. He stretches it, and then he attacks it. Shake and break right there. Defender's not coming to balance. Gets a pickoff block right there. Now it's just speed. He gets a little brush block here, right here, by Bryant, number one. Sets him free. Poor coverage all the way. And Coach Hatfield said yesterday, my big concern is the kicking game because sometimes with a long layoff, you lose your concentration. Clemson has lost their concentration in the kick game. Well, I've got one idea for Clemson. Something they might try at halftime, Dick. Might go back in the locker room and uh, put on the, the orange jerseys. <laughs> Let's play this one in the orange. Yeah, they're, they're you know, in California, the youngsters, when they saw them come out, they, they don't have any idea what the colors are over there at Clemson. They didn't know whether they're purple or green or what the deal is. If you, if you bring them out against North Carolina State, it probably has more significance. So Brian Treggs, who uh, has moved, I guess, to Palo Alto after his, uh, his taunt prior to the Stanford game, and there's a fan that says this is ridiculous, man. I'm going back to Clemson. Let's. Well, what's they, the deal here? I'm going to go back to the SO Club. I'm going to watch the rest of this one and wait for the Rose Bowl. <laughs> I've had enough. The one thing you know about Clemson football is that it's not over until it's over. The second quarter has been their big offensive quarter, scoring 101 points in that quarter. By far their best quarter. They just got to get their motors running. High deep kickoff to the one. Let's see if Easton can do any better this time. He does. Breaks free at the 30, and it'll be at the 32. And let's go down and wish a happy new year to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Thanks a lot, Brent. Well, I found out from the officials that Brinson Buckner was indeed injected from the game for throwing a punch. I talked to a couple of the Clemson coaches. They also told me that this would definitely affect them in the depth and stamina in this position. Brent? Thank you very much, Cheryl. And Four possessions for California and three scores. Two touchdowns and a field goal. Clemson needs something here in a hurry. We're still in the first quarter of this one. A shocker against this defense. Harris busts it. He's in a foot race. Wilson for the angle. Wilson from the angle's got him out of bounds. A penalty flag. He may have grabbed the face mask on the big fullback that time as Rudy Harris bolts 43 yards. Rudy Harris is the fullback that broke the Duke game in Japan wide open, had a great game rushing for 126. Watch to the right side of your screen. Good block by the tight end to the right side of your screen. They hand it off, and they just hand it off. He's reading that all the way. Poor tackle right there by the outside linebacker. Now here's a 240-pound fullback outrunning the secondary to the sideline. There's a face mask right there by David Wilson, number 25. See, they come down the line of scrimmage and read that play. If the defender is outside, they hand it off. If he closes it, the quarterback keeps it. And there is the difficulty of having that gambling, stunting defense up front. If you break it, you can break it big at the line of scrimmage, and you've got only a defensive back to beat. Right, the other guys are playing man-to-man. -man. Face mask foul, defense, first down. Ball put on the 20-yard line for the first down. Clemson's best opportunity of the game. Bryant, the wide receiver, Hall replaces Harris as the fullback. Pair of tight ends. Blunt hit behind the line by Mac Travis. Travis comes off his block, slides in behind, and wrestles the ball carrier down. This is the biggest hole the Tigers have ever been in. They've not trailed by 17 points yet this year. Matt Kravis is a second team all Pac-10 defensive tackle in there, in playing like a first string Pac-10 defensive tackle right now. 
A big series as Cameron, who hasn't completed a pass yet, gets one to Smith. Smith slipped a little bit, and then the cleanup man is number 55. Jarrett Willard, along with Ryan Perry. You can see the Jarrett Willard is a first team freshman All-American. He can really move, led the team in tackles with 85. He's made a lot of big plays behind the line of scrimmage. Played on the South Shrine team in California. When you can make the South Shrine team in high school in California, you're a fine player. Clemson forced a punt each of its first three possessions today. Third down and seven. They'll probably use both downs in an effort to get the first trailing by 17 on the draw. One is short of it. They're going to need five yards. I'm not so sure that Hatfield won't kick the field goal. He's going to go for the field goal here. Nelson Welsh trots out on the field with yep. time running down. He's down by two touchdowns and a field goal. He has to get a field goal somewhere in this sequence, so he might as well go now because it would be fourth and five. You always have to be alert when you're defensing a Hatfield uh, kicking game. They have a lot of tricks on their sleeve, believe me. Not a whole lot of wind. I'm not sure that it makes a lot of difference if they let the time run out here for the end of the quarter. They're going to kick it before it ends. He blasted that one good, didn't he? A 32-yard field goal by Nelson Welsh. The first quarter comes to an end. Three words describe it. Wild and woolly. And mostly California, folks. Brought to you by Mitsubishi Montero. A luxury car with the luxury of four-wheel drive. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. We're back. Clemson. Trailing 17 to 3, kicking off to start the second quarter. It has been the California passing of Mike Pulaski that has been all the difference in the world. Suave takes this one deep. Fielded at the 18 by Chapman. Chapman to the 34-yard line. First and 10 for Cal. All right, Dick, let's make you the defensive coordinator for the Purple Gang here. They're doing a spectacular job against the California Rush, but how do they get to Mr. Pulaski? Well, the first thing I think you got to do is get some other type of coverage on the two wide receivers so when he sets up to throw, he has to hold the ball to allow the rush to get there. It's going to be hard to get to Cal with a direct rush because they've only given up nine sacks on the season coming in here, Brent. So you've got to take the pattern away downfield slow up the uh, delivery, and then let the uh, pressure get there. We had more action than we had in four quarters in Kansas City. <laughs> now that's something that they're just not able to do. LeVon Kirkland, number 44, and the talented linebacker, makes the stop for the Tigers. They're just not running the ball, but they've passed for better than 130 yards. I think this no huddle, too, is just breaking the continuity of Clemson's defense. Now they're going into what I was talking about, it appears anyway, a double zone look. McLaughlin over on Azine, a bull rush. Azine gets help. Pulaski stands in and throws high. McLaughlin was coming, but that time they gave Azine help against the big fella as we take a look at the first quarter numbers. As you can see, time and possession is not very important. It's just more important to do a real good job with your offense. Cal not rushing the ball very well, but throwing the heck out of it. And they'll fire it again. He stands, steps in that pocket, and he wanted Caldwell. Defending Caldwell was Kinzel Jackson, the linebacker. He was draped all over him. Good coverage that time. That's the first series, one, two, three, and out for Clemson defense. They're used to playing that kind of defense. One, two, three, and get out of here. The way the punting games have gone in the bowl game so far. Remember, Oklahoma jumped all over a Virginia punt. Clemson may try to tee off here on Chris Noonan. They also have Darnell Stevens, number 30. He is a superb deep return man, along with Robert O'Neill. Oh, they were coming down the middle that time. Stevens fumbles at the 13, picks it up. Down at the 15-yard line. 
A 52 yard punt by Chris Noonan. California up 17 to 3 in the Citrus Bowl. We're back at the Citrus Bowl with Dick Vermeil. I'm Brent Musburger. California scoring 17 points in the first quarter leads Clemson 17 to 3. The Tigers breaking out the purple jerseys come out from their own 15 yard line. Blunt bust free and Wilson again forced to make the tackle. It's at the 25 yard line. The running game starting to open up with those big line splits now that you, they're using. You mentioned big line splits. Look at this split here. Good split here. Good split and huge split here. What they're trying to do is spread that gap, that front eight defense out there and allow a good crack for the fullback to come in and block that linebacker. Boy, that was a big hole. They moved the splits according to the play called. Chester McLaughlin could have run through that hole. Well, what, what Cal will do is when they see those big splits, they'll call a line stunt and see if they can't beat him inside. Get somebody in there and apply some pressure. There's a flag that was picked up, I believe. Let's see what he says. Offside, defense, declined, first down. So they made the first down on the run with the ball at the 26-yard line. And Deshaun Cameron, the senior quarterback, you can see those splits now. Look at them, really big. The hand to Harris. Harris muscles to the 34. Boy, look, they're going to have to bring a backer or stun a tackle or in, in those gaps. Oh, talk about being on an island. Second and two. Sometimes you'll get an offensive lineman and they'll get scared about a split like that. And as the game wears on, it gets hotter and hotter. They'll draw closer and closer to their teammates. I've seen that happen as Paul Caputo checks into the backfield. Harris blasting for the first down, and Clemson now starting to run with a purpose. See, the one thing the big splits do, it eliminates getting help from your offensive lineman. Your guy to your inside, you're too far away from him. See, or you can't help the guy to the outside because you're too far away. You can't zone block for those great big splits. First and 10. Cameron with a pitch to Blunt, well defended that time by the Bears. See, he wanted to throw that ball, Brent. He wanted to throw it, but uh, Chris Cannon had the receiver covered, number 18. He couldn't throw it, so he, he went ahead and turned it into an option running play. Good defense by Cal. Now, see, he's going to come down. He's going to be faking the option, but he wants to throw it. He wants to throw it. See, now it's taken away. Now he turns it into an option. That's tough to do. You really have to coach to get that done. Matt Travis in here putting the pressure on him. And Ray Sanders making the stop. And it's second and 16. This is a position Clemson does not like finding itself in. Cameron with only one completed pass in six attempts. Uses Smith, his favorite target, to go in motion. And Blunt stuffed at the 29-yard line by Brad Powers. Brad Bowers, a great big young six foot seven, 255 pound player out of Bellarmine High School in, in San Jose, played for the North in the Shrine Team game in, in California. Big young guy, I saw him the other day on the practice field. I think he's probably put on a few pounds since the start of the year, but he has great potential. So it's third and a bunch for an option team that doesn't like facing a situation like this at all. Straight back, drops it to Blunt on the screen. Alley on the left side, Blunt to the 44-yard line, short of the first down. Chris Cannon, defensively, a 15-yard gain, so they need four more. He did a nice job of executing that screen, Brent. You know, that's not a big phase of their offense, but they did a good job of executing it. Now, you know, Clemson came into this game allowing only 86 yards on punt returns. And so far today, California has 108 yards, including a spectacular 72-yard return for a touchdown by Brian Treggs as Chuck Lynch is back to punt again. He booms one to Mr. Treggs. 
from the 15 to the middle. Dives to the 26-yard line. Will be California ball. A nine-yard return off that 40-yard Lynch punt. The Fighting Tigers of Clemson University wish you a happy new year, 1992. And watch out for the paw. Well, that paw has been rather soft here in the first half so far, yielding 17 points. Clemson, a winner of the ACC. This is the last year of their agreement to send their champion to the Citrus Bowl. Russell White on a comeback against that tough run defense. Gets three yards and no more. Ashley Shepard is there. Let me follow up on that Citrus Bowl story because next year, and let's compliment Jim Delaney for a strong smart move here the two on the runner up in the Big Ten is going to come Second to Orlando eight. Florida and play here in the Citrus Bowl against an at-large team that well could be one of the top teams out of the Southeastern Conference as the ACC goes off to that bowl alliance and is suddenly up in the air the third place Big Ten team will go to the Holiday Bowl so some great sights for Big Ten fans as this one is deflected by Rob Bodine the walk on nose man out of North Dakota who has done a spectacular job in that spot for coach Ken Hetfield. Bodine as we were talking to him the other day he works on a dude ranch right. Yeah it knew a little bit about where you come from in Montana too did he. Yeah we tell North Dakota jokes in Montana. Yeah. <laughs> Here he is number 99 in the middle of your screen goes from a walk on to an all American. Good job by Bodine. Suddenly Pulaski is cold. He's missed his last five passes. He was blazing in the early going in this one. Now faces a third down against this Clemson defense. Short drop, has time. Side on to the Caldwell, but that's short of a first down. California forced the punt as Norris Brown gets it done defensively for the Tigers. Well, Pulaski came up there and red blitz man to man coverage, and he went ahead and checked to a man to man pattern. Good tackling prevented the first down. The last time. Cal went back to punt and here he is Chris Noonan there was enormous pressure up the middle Clemson came very close to blocking the last punt he hasn't had one blocked all year but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen now but they did get great pressure last they put time Robert O'Neill here on the left side they're going to try to get something going off the corner they've moved O'Neill up tight Hatfield trying to go for it here they come Easton he could not get there the punter is down there is no flag this is Stevens from the 19 yard line Stevens dancing will not get away and out of bounds at the 18 yard line a 48 yard punt brilliant punt and a minus one on the return Cal's punt team doing an excellent job here today. 9.42 to go here in the first half of the Citrus Bowl. California playing on New Year's Day for the first time since the 59 Rose Bowl. Leading Clemson 17-3. The Tigers have won five straight bowl games. And now Deshaun Cameron, who's won 85% of his starts, faces an uphill battle against this tough Cal defense. And the fullback, Harris, is stuffed that time. The big play of the game so far belongs to California. And it was Brian Treggs with this 72-yard punt return day. And you just don't see many punt returns for touchdowns. I think we've seen one all year, and this is like our 30th game this year. Outstanding play by Brian, and he hasn't broken the log punt return all year. Coming into the ball game, 35 yards was his longest one. Here he is, breaking the record at the right time. And again, we go back to the top of the broadcast. The difference, California has big players. And now it is Cameron who has to come back for Clemson, throwing high and out of bounds to Bryant. Throwing hard to run, and under pressure, he overthrew the wide out, number one Bryant. He is now two of eight for 19 yards throwing the ball and when you're trying to come from behind you need accuracy at that spot and he has been the kind of kind of quarterback if he starts out hot he gets harder if he starts out cold he struggles this is what the coaches were concerned about the Cal defensive staff very aware that they're trying to spring the fullback and on that first down play they jumped all over Rudy Harris. Now it's a single back attack for Clemson on third and ten as Blunt goes in motion. Cameron under pressure, sacked. 
hammered at the eight yard line. Paul Joyner busts through. Paul Joyner getting his chance to play today because of being the starter being disciplined. And here he is making big plays out of your high school in Southern California. 47, the middle of your screen. He's going to be blitzing left side. Here he comes right up the gut. No one comes off and picks him up. Hey, no one blocks it. You ought to sack the quarterback. And the Clemson punter, Chuck Lynch, standing in his own end zone. And Triggs will try to do business again. High punt. Triggs signals for the fair catch at the 47-yard line with 8-11 to go. The California Golden Bears take over after the 38-yard punt. An impressive performance by California. The youngsters on that team were embarrassed by what happened in Palo Alto against Stanford. They got a little bit out of control, lost their poise in that game, had a number of unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, roughing the passer, several other things that occurred in that game. They were determined to come back here and make a statement today, and so far they have, playing tough, aggressive football, dominating Clemson for the most part, 17 to 3. Fine show by Bruce Snyder and his staff. Velasque drops a screen to Chapman. Chapman steps away from the defender and breaks to the 30, the 20, and out at the 10-yard line. And you would have to say that California looks much quicker than Clemson. You'll see the running back coming out set and work with the screen. Then the peel-off system get out there to help out. Good call on first down. See, they lose him. See, they're rushing. No one picks him up right there. He gets it. Now he gets the kick-out block right there. Now just good running skills, blocks downfield. Little poor tackling there, not coming to balance. Brush block there. Big play, Cal. So the ACC being tarnished a little bit here in the early going as Russell White cuts in to the three-yard line. Robert O'Neill making the stop. There was White's best run of the game. See, they're getting them rattled a little bit, and they felt if they could shake them up and do all these other things, then they could run on them. There's Coach Snyder right there in the middle of your screen. I think he felt maybe someone hit Russell just a little bit late. Where's the flag, he's saying. Second down. White stops short of that goal. You know, Russell ran for 229 yards to beat USC this year. That's a lot of yards against the USC defense. And they weren't as good as they normally are, but that's still a lot of yards. But he's been a guy, if his motor is running, he's as good as any back in the country. The ACC, Georgia Tech, staged a fine comeback. Great punt return by Clay to beat Stanford. But Virginia blown out by Oklahoma. And now California threatening to really pull out on Clemson in the first half. Big toss, Pulaski rolling to the right. Fires high and out of the end zone. He was being well pursued that time. I, you know, I, I don't know why they did that, Brent. From here, it looks like they could have made a first down before they make the touchdown. You'll see here, it's good fake if it works. Fake the toss to Russell. He's the guy that's been the horse that got him down there. But they had a chance for a first down. Well, they're going to go ahead for it right now. It'll be tough going against this Clemson run defense. This is their strength. White's the running back. Here he comes. White for the touchdown. He walks in, angling to the left. Greg Zuma blows the way open. And the Bears are blowing apart Clemson. Just the deep ice slant play, middle of your screen, tailback. He comes off, the offensive line does a nice job right here. They come off the ball, good guard step around, good block by the fullback, zoom up. He walks in, shows the fans the ball. Here he goes again. Left guard pulls around. Good block right there by Anasema Zagapulo. They're going for two off the toss to Zomalt. There's a penalty flag. They pulled the trick play. They came out and quickly lined up. And they had the underhanded toss for the two-point conversion. But let's let the referee sort this one out. Well, oh. it's against Clemson. They're 
pulling out at all stops. So the two-point conversion, and there's a discussion now about the legality of it. Well, let's see the referee sort this one out. They went from the third down play. No substitutions, Brent, so it can't, they can't be discussing an illegal substitution. I think Coach Snyder is ready to run on the field with a rule book. I can't see what the debate would be. Illegal motion, offense. Offside, defense, offset, replay. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> and let's bet that they don't do that play again, all right? Here at the moment. <laughs> well, they're going to line up the same way, folks. This is the same lineup. This time they shift it over. This time, so instead of 25, it'll be 24 to three. You didn't, you didn't see it the first time, folks. It doesn't matter. It didn't count. It never happened. Just pretend it never happened. Okay. 24 to three. And we're coming back. We are back at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, and I'm Brent Musburger with Dick Vermeil. And folks, Dick uh, assured me that. Clemson would just be too much for California to handle in this one. Happy New Year, Dick, as we ring in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last time I'm going to dial your number. Yeah. <laughs> it's a kickoff. Drive back way deep in the end zone. It's going to come out now on the 20-yard line. Dick, now, for Clemson, it's like an option team. It's like the old wishbone teams of Barry Switzer. So hard to come from behind in this situation. It is. It is tough, but they, they've been a good second half team. They played better from the second quarter on. They played a little better defensively, except for the finesse right, plays, right, yeah. the screens and those right, kind of plays. They up? look a step it. slow back. and getting out into the perimeter right, from the inside right. out on that defense. Clemson has punted five times in this game already. They have one 32 yard field goal. That's their only score of the game. Their defense came in allowing just five rushing TDs, and already today they've given up two. Now they put the left-hander Moncrief in at quarterback. No, let's check that. That's still Cameron. That's still Cameron. I was ahead of myself. That comes in the second half, doesn't it? <laughs> that comes in the second half. <laughs> if this guy Cameron is capable of once he gets going to really go in a hot streak. There he is with his helmet on. He's the young man who played against Duke over in the Tokyo Bowl when Clemson traveled over there. Cameron with a nicked up ankle now rolling to the right away from the pressure firing complete to Smith. Out of bounds at the 29 yard line. So they're still going to need a good five yards here for a first down. The start of a big day on ABC. Who, Dick, is going to win the granddaddy, the Rose Bowl, between Washington and Michigan? Well, if I were going to pick them, and you know how good I am at that, I'd have to go with Washington. I think they're the best team in the country. That's but the Michigan, best news that the state of Michigan has ever received. Right? But Michigan is very much capable of winning the ball game. You know that. Notre Dame and Florida, and just when everybody says the Fighting Irish are finished, can't do it, beware of them in a bowl game, huh, folks? As Lou Holtz becomes the defensive coordinator for this one. Oh, six on third down conversion. Firing, there's his first third down conversion. And it is Smith who is out of bounds. Chris Cannon there defensively. Clemson badly Chris needs a Cannon touchdown here late in the first half. Something to build on at halftime. Well, you know, if you move the ball well enough, you're eventually going to get it in the end zone. But what they did that time is they converted for the first time in a while. They've got to keep the ball moving. It's not their style of attack to score in one play. So they have to just be as efficient as they possibly can, especially on first down. 
Coach Snyder over there saying, "Move, block, move." Blunt, cut back. On the 48-yard line. Boy, California is such a different team than they were against Stanford. Playing with a crispness. If there's anything that surprises me overall in this game, it's the fact that California looks so much quicker than Clemson in this game. I'm really surprised about that. Well, I am not as surprised that they're quicker. I'm surprised that they're doing so well at handling the power of uh, Clemson, the big strength, strong guys. What they're doing coming from angles, changing up with their fronts. They've been able to get pressure on Cameron. These men down in the trenches doing an excellent job. There'll be pressure. Cameron steps away from it now. Big opening on the left. Cameron in a foot race. Cameron inside the 20. Touchdown, Clemson. There's the big play. Deshaun Cameron hops one in. 62 yards. This time, the quickness, the Cal, they over pursued a little bit. They get in there. See, there's Barcelo 13. They read the fake. Now, watch him get up inside. See, now, they really get going. Now, this guy has really improved his scrambling ability this year. And here he is going to take it all away. He gets a nice block from Larry Ryan's down there, just enough to screen him and allow him in the end zone. Big, big play. Not designed, but the results are the same. And the extra point by Nelson Welsh. Just like that, it's 24 to 10. Here's another look at it. Rick Stockfield, the quarterback coach, told me that this guy has improved his scrambling ability. He didn't scramble much earlier because he likes to throw the football. I bet he's glad he scrambled on that one. Sure glad they didn't switch to the left-hander. <laughs> You know, you're talking about that Duke game. They came back from being behind in, uh, in that fourth quarter in the Duke game and did a real good job of putting some points on the board. Now that's the longest run of the season for a Clemson back. Well, when they lost Williams, you know, he had a 56-yard uh, long yard run. When they lost him, uh, they lost an awful lot of their offense, but they felt in losing him it spread the responsibility for winning and execution and offense uh, to everybody else, and they felt the offense improved. The young man, Deshaun Cameron, we were talking about his future. He'd like to play in the NFL, but he realizes he's a little small for an NFL quarterback, but he said, tell the folks up in the Canadian Football League that I would love to come up there. Three downs to make 10 yards, wider field, I can do it. I would think right now that the Rocket is saying, go get me Cameron, I can yeah, use it. use some help. You know, he's already graduated from college. He's taken a few graduate courses now, so he's out of school. Now it will be up to the Clemson defense. And as we look back at the Clemson record book, that's the longest run by a Tiger quarterback in 13 years. That's a lot of good quarterbacks, especially runners. Kicking along the ground, fielded by Holly. Holly at the 40-yard line. California's ball with 440 to go. Clemson wants badly to get it back before intermission. Now Clemson's got to do a real good job in this series and get the ball back quickly, Brett. They can't give them another big play. I I think you might see a little more man-to-man -man coverage so they can do a better job of defensive screen plays. Because when you're man-to-man -man on a screen call, you have a linebacker locked on to the receiver. And he follows them right to where they're going to throw in the ball and usually makes the play. Chapman the running back. The wide men are out to Pulaski's right. Chapman, the middle for four yards to the 45-yard line. And Arthur Bussey there defensively. Chapman has been very effective in the games that we've seen him play, especially against University of Washington. He broke a big one up inside. His birthday is today. This is just what you'd want in a bowl game. I've seen some dull defensive games so far in the bowl season. <laughs> this <laughs> one is anything but. Pulaski hands. And the defense does the rest. It's going to be third and about three yards coming up as Warren Forney, number 90, made the snap. You know, I really watched. Uh, the offensive guard on that play pull and block that's on the same Osagapulo. He's about, they list him at six foot, but he's more like 5'9, 335. And when he comes out, he doesn't have to bend over very far to get under your pads to block you. Pulaski has time, 
sprinting to the left, and a first down. And he took the defender on. Pulaski just giving up his body on that far side. He had played mostly safety in high school. The first time I ever saw him play football, he was covering kickoffs as a kickoff coverage guy as the third quarterback a couple years ago. Here he is. Look at he's tough. He wears the mask. His idol's Jim McMahon. Now you get a youngster <laughs> named Pulaski, and you yeah. think you got a defensive lineman to begin with, and that's how he played that game. Let's go. Let's play. First and ten. Pulaski sets the screen beautifully. And the tackle at the 40 on Greg Zomalt. So this puts him in second and short. Here comes this Cal offense again. Yeah. You see those kind of screen plays force defensive linemen to come off their, their rush, get off the block, and chase the, the, the ball carrier, the receiver, and that gradually wears you down. Are you shocked that Chester McLaughlin has taken another break? No, 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 no. <laughs> Not at all. On second down, the hand to Russell White. Here's where they want to use White, close to the first down, to the 35-yard line. They feel that this defense might be just a touch winded. They've been on the field a lot, and they're going to try to bring it down. I'd like to see him toss Russell White the ball outside, wide side of the field, and make the defense chase him to the sideline, because he, he really runs outside well. In fact, he runs anywhere he wants to most of the time. What's your feeling about White? He's made an announcement that would indicate he's going to stay in school next year. Is that a good idea? I think so. I think he needs another year of maturing. Uh, he could very well uh, be the finest running back in the country next year as he matures. And you know the offense is going to be good and well coached when you have people like Steve Mariucci and Bill Cockerham and, and Tom Keel and Dan Casotto and, and Dick Arbuckle coaching that offensive football team. They'll be good. This could be the most important defensive series of the game for the Tigers. With 2.40 to go in the first half, they're down 24 to 10. And McLaughlin watching his teammates. They take themselves out of the lineup whenever they want for Clemson. Somewhat unusual maneuver for some of their stars, but they substitute themselves. Here's the play you wanted, Dick. The toss to White. Dives out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Good gain on first down. That made a heck of a call. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> when you run outside, you have to get a block by your tight end. Brent Woodhall does a good job, and you need a block by your fullback. Right here, Zoom Alt 28. See, he gets a knockdown. That gives him the corner, makes everybody else pursue, move the chains. Zoma playing a heck of a game. He scored the first touchdown. He's blocked very well. He's caught passes. And he makes it easy for this fella. Here he is again doing just that. A knockdown on the linebacker. White does the rest. Out of bounds at that 20-yard line. What a splendid game plan. Keep White away from the attack in the early going until we think we've got the defense just a little tired. Don't let him shut our best running back down early. Yeah, and you'll see why he runs efficiently here. Watch Sumo gets a block. Then both wide receivers are out doing a good job getting their block. Sean Dawkins says my scholarship includes blocking, so he does it. Now the Clemson defense needs a stop. It's first and 10 for Cal at the Clemson 20-yard line. White makes the most of that run for three yards, and Jackson, who's been active defensively, bringing him down for the Tigers. We have not heard much of number 44, Kirkland, on this Clemson defense, or even 93, McDaniel. And looking at those numbers, they're both out, too. I wouldn't be surprised to see Pulaski come up with, with a bootleg off that type of action, Brent, because so there was no the backside that time. Watching this series, their backups out there, a play there fake by Pulaski, rolls around, still on the roll, he keeps it and he is out of bounds. Two in a row. <laughs> I, I saw on the last counter play that they ran, the backside was really uh, there. there. The coaches also saw it, so they pull the lineman, Fake that run, see, now he comes out there, he gets outside contain, he wanted to throw good coverage downfield by the defense, he goes ahead, tucks it under his arm and runs. LeVon Kirkland trots onto the field. He'll be lined up at the left outside as the rush man in this third down. Big third down here for California. Broken Lost play. Slips. Broken play. He is down. California will go for the field goal. 
They're excited about the stop. The offense stopped themselves that time. Somebody fouled up. What Clemson needs more than anything in the world at 125 and down by two touchdowns is a blocked field goal. We got a timeout called by the Clemson defense. So we've got an opportunity here and let's take a look at what's ahead of us on prime time. Well here at the Citrus Bowl California leading Clemson 24 to 10 we'd like to welcome you folks who just watched East Carolina win a big one coming from behind over North Carolina State 37 34 the final in that game they were down 34 to 17 so the Pirates with a wonderful season and a win in their bowl game and another loss by the ACC. Their only win so far by Georgia Tech and Bobby Ross the architect there hit the road for the NFL being named the head coach of the San Diego Chargers. He's a wonderful coach. He won his national championship here in this bowl last year. Thirty three yard field goal on its way off to the right and close good. Doug Bryan a 33 yarder and it's 27 10. Well Coach Snyder said he wanted to recapture the personality of the team prior to that Stanford game. He, they lost their composure in the Stanford game. The team was embarrassed about it. He was embarrassed about it. It's obvious they've regained that personality. We'd have a game if Clemson had showed up here with the defense. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they're not used to seeing this kind of football week in and week out in the ACC. They're What's just different about to, it? Well, they do more things with the ball. And there, there are so many skilled athletes that in, in the Pac-10, a lot of times, you get a guy open, you complete it. A lot of passes in the ACC are not defended, they're thrown incomplete. Does that bode trouble for Michigan? Uh, Michigan can play. <laughs> Michigan can play. What's the Big Ten in bowl so far this year? I think they're 1-1-1 one, one, and one with Ohio State trailing Syracuse the last time I checked. Brian kicking off a 27-10 entertainer here in the Citrus Bowl. Check how the how the different conferences have done overall, and you can see backing up what Dick Vermeil says, the Pac-10 has won 54 percent of its bowl games, but the ACC too has been a good bowl conference, largely because of Clemson. This year, there's what the three have done, but the ACC has changed already, as North Carolina State has lost. Isn't that right? First and ten for Clemson. Well, we get word that there's still six seconds left in that North Carolina State game. So that was not quite a final. Here's the handoff to Blunt. Blunt to the 24-yard line. Barsala and Sanders there defensively. You know, you see the hole. But what Cal is doing with their quickness, they get to the hole. It looks like it's there, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's two guys. Now Cameron. So blunt. You know, I was on the practice field the other day, and I watched Cameron closely, and he threw the ball awfully well. Nice, tight spirals, very accurate. 51 seconds left for the Tigers and a first down. Derek Witherspoon checks in, and that's what's coming up at halftime. Cameron gets one on one with Smith. Smith with Cannon, and Cannon 
defends it at the 20 yard line. Good defense by Chris Kennedy. Came into the ball game with five pass interceptions. Should have had his sixth one right there, but he'll settle for that with 38 seconds left in the half. Good job of playing pass defense by Chris Cannon. See, this guy here, and he can also leap. He didn't have to there, but he was a six foot eight high jumper in high school. So he's a real fine athlete playing good secondary coverage. Final half minute here, the first half of the Citrus Bowl. At the 33-yard line, Ray Sanders delivers the hit on Ty Gibson, the tight end. The seconds ticking down. And East Carolina's win. Syracuse still ahead of Ohio State in the third quarter. Now Cameron incomplete, stopping the clock with 11 seconds to go. Brent, their wide receiver routes are so short that they're barely getting around the linebackers as they curl back inside. You know, they've got to stretch those patterns a little bit more. So the final 11 seconds. But the big play by Cameron, the 80-yard drive he engineered with the 62-yard run for the touchdown. They hurry up at 11 seconds, and this is one of those plays where they sprinted the punter out onto the field. Cal had some problem getting the return people on properly and the other people off properly. Three timeouts to go. If they had turned it over quickly here on this fourth down and long, California would have had a free shot at the end zone. They did not want to give a long field goal or a pass an opportunity to be successful here. And a, and a reminder that January 11th on ABC, National Crowns and Olympic Bursts on the Line, U.S. Figure Skating Championships presented by Diet Coke and NutraSweet. It'll be the season premiere, and our top male skaters will compete for the national title. Later in the prime time special, at 9 Eastern, the women will take on the ace. Ice for the ladies' final and live. Christy Yamaguchi, that's all coming up in January on ABC. There's where they will skate for the glory at the Orlando Arena. Not far here from the Citrus Bowl. Everybody's doing fine back there in the Bay Area. And very pleased that you guys are being successful here in the state of Florida. Terrific performance by the Bears in the first half. You couldn't have asked. For a better job. One of the things to keep in mind with bowl games, the half times run a little bit longer than normal, and sometimes you play two football games rather than one. You don't want to lose that momentum that you had going in the first half. Treggs, who had a spectacular punt return for a touchdown, makes a fair catch. Final four, sex four seconds coming up. Four seconds. Cal has been so aggressive the whole ball game with their offense. Here, I kind of doubt they'll do anything. Maybe, maybe they'll go ahead and throw the big alley oop and try to lay one down there. But to four seconds is no sense in a fool around. After our intermission, Clemson will have the ball. They will receive the kickoff. They get the first possession, and California will take this lead on into the locker room. They're going to be very content to go in there with a 27-10 lead. Watch him make a flop on and throw it deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> so we're going to return with our halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC station. You see the chancellor leading them to the locker room. He's excited. Don't I know you? The day we decide a national championship, as far as the voters are concerned at college football, uh, I'm getting my Greg's and my Steve's a little confused. Short time ago, I called him Greg Entman. Of course, that's a fellow he's going to be working against, big Greg Skrepanek. So Steve Entman, and we hope he's going to be healthy for that upcoming Rose Bowl. Now, speaking of the national championship, we want to go back and take a look at how the AP poll unfolded during this college football season. There were so many plays that wound up being huge in the eyes of the voters. 
the biggest play of the year may have occurred on the second Saturday of September. Gerback to fire for it. They went for it all. A diving pass for a touchdown. Holy cow. Would you believe this? Michigan established early dominance, and the Irish fell. One week later, Syracuse handed Florida a reversal of fortune, and Washington continued its purple reign. And it's a reverse handoff going to the far side of the field to Kirby Dardar. Dardar is out of the Florida area at a 50. He may go all the way. Kirby Dardar breaks him out of Tampa, takes it all away. Touchdown, Syracuse. Nebraska's stacked in there pretty tight, but Washington stays on the ground, and this is Barry getting outside. Oh, he's gone. There isn't anybody around him if he can outrun one man. Touchdown, Washington, and the door just slammed. The Huskies were in plain sight, while Florida and Nebraska were nowhere to be found. The next week, another showdown at Ann Arbor. Field is flat, prescription turf. Throw it to the sideline, it is intercepted. Florida State was sitting and waiting for it, and Terrell Buckley has scored a touchdown. How do you do? The Seminoles remained at number one, while Michigan demonstrated just how costly one loss can be. Then in late October, a battle of undefeated. So the Huskies now are going to have to dig down and show everybody if they are indeed the best team in the country. California has made them play to the fourth quarter. A beautiful cutback, and Bryant is gone. Beano Bryant explodes. Touchdown, Huskies. The Huskies proved to be best in the West and sat back and waited for the battles of Florida. In November, Bobby Bowden learned a painful lesson. Football is a game of inches. It's up. Missed it to the right. Miami moved to number one. And on November's final day, there was one more big game to play. Matthews gets it off. He's got a man. A Gator victory put them back in the national championship hunt. So now we come to New Year's Day, and it's anybody's ball game. Who is number one? So the road to a national championship will move next out to Pasadena for the Rose Bowl when Washington takes on Michigan. Back with more at halftime of the Citrus Bowl in just a moment. The Florida Citrus Bowl. Brought to you by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Clemson trailing by three scores as we begin the second half, and let's check in with Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Brent, I spoke with Coach Hatfield uh, at the end of the first half, and I asked him if he was surprised that Cal scored so easily and so many points, and he said, no, Cheryl, Cal is a great team. He said that they were passing the ball very effectively and that all season they've had uh, problems defensively uh, handling the pass but the one problem he said that he was very disappointed with his players was the lack of effort and heart and he said the only way that his team could get back into this game is with a complete and total team effort as for Cal well coach Snyder said that he was very pleased offensively he said the game the passing game was extremely effective and towards the second quarter they got the running game going he said the only disappointment defensively we were there to make the plays we simply weren't making the tackles and I'll tell you right right now Brent this game was built as Cal's finesse against Clemson's power the finesse team is winning so far I would say 27 to 10 as we take a look at the numbers Dick from the first half well you can see it's obvious that the total yards are in favor of Cal but not as much as the score neither team has turned the ball over the kicking game breakdown by Clemson long punt return then long punt return for a touchdown uh, that has really killed them as much as anything now here's how these two teams really got ready for this bowl game. Forget all this stuff about training tables and practices, folks. Here they come from a couple hundred feet. Oh, mama, I'm all right. something different, and you know how kids are. Probably uh, at that age, I'd have done it myself. They, they asked me to go with them, and I said, no way, and I don't want you to go. We, we put a, a cap on that, actually. I'd been sure I'd have checked the length of that rope before I jumped up there, though. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Coach... Then, excuse me, Brent. Coach Snyder's daughter did it. That's right. Yeah, she went up. So Covered me. 
So did our spotter, Jimmy Tubbs. Okay. No, but he's crazy. Yeah. How come you didn't go? I thought you were next. No guts. No guts. <laughs> Folks, I got no guts. I don't do that. <laughs> That's the thrill of the 90s. 1992, a little bungee jumping down here in Orlando, Florida in uh, 1966. Virginia was way up on Clemson 35-17 and uh, so my spotter up here he survived folks. <laughs> he gonna do it again. Look at we don't have anything down on his ankles down there to hold him up. I know I asked him three times you can back out we won't call you a coward. You know I was more nervous than he was. Oh, it was something looking right straight up there a couple hundred feet. <laughs> yeah. He showed me something. Well Kenny Hatfield now will try to show us something. They have not allowed a touchdown in the third quarter yet this year. They're down by three scores. Let's remember that. They trail it by 17 points. So two touchdowns and two two-point conversions still don't get the job done. They figure to handle the ball about eight times here in the second half. They trail 27-10. But the key thing for them will be what they can do defensively. And this young man, too, can make it tough on them. Doug Bryan, he's kicking very well here today, unlike in their last game back in Northern California. So this could cap off a spectacular season for the Golden Bears of California and Bruce Snyder and their many loyal fans all across the country have to be delighted with what they're watching here. Ryan's now trying to ignite Clemson. Brings it out to the 25 and we should point out that yes it has rained lightly some shoving going on down there you see Gibson the tight end into it with a couple of bears there has been a little precipitation here at halftime we'll see how this field holds up it is a gorgeous field. It was Bermuda grass and when it goes dormant in the fall then they top it off with the rye grass and this is one of the best grounds crews in America down here. You can see by that graphic that Clemson has a, a, a past history of being strong in the second half in bowl games over the last four times out. So Blunt still the tailback Harris the fullback Cameron who had a 62 yard Run for a touchdown, quarterbacks. And the first hand is to Blunt. And Blunt powers behind the offensive line to the 32 yard line. And Chidi on a two. Chidi, Chidi, bang, bang. I knew you were going to use that, you know. Chidi's a good football player for him. And he's also an outstanding student. Going to go to med school, has a brother at Stanford University, has a brother at MIT, a very bright family, has made all Pac 10 academic teams in the past, though he didn't make it this year. Coaches trailing want that positive statement in their first possession of the second half. Let's see what happens for Ken Hatfield and Clemson. Harris gets outside on the slant, running room, and forces the cornerback, Chris Cannon, to make the stop. First down, Clemson. See, the thing they're doing, again, they're using the big splits. They kept the line of scrimmage clean, meaning they didn't allow any penetration. And Harris just slid along the line of scrimmage and then bounced it outside. Big guy and quick enough to get outside as well. Off to a good start, those seven carries. They'll need him here in the second half. Blunt stuffed by number 58, Mac Travis. See, he tried to cut back. He didn't get the cutoff block from his backside guard, and Mac Travis came in and made the play, playing very well today. I can remember doing a ball game a few years ago at Cal, and I said, Cal wasn't going to win until they had defensive linemen comparable to the team that was beating him. This year we're at Cal. Mac Travis walked over before practice. He says, how do I look now, coach? <laughs> hey, Mac, you look great. Second and long. Cameron, plenty of time. Rolls right. Throws high. Complete. Nice grab by Smith. Complete number 24, Terry Smith. Terry Smith is the fastest receiver on the team. He's making here his 46th catch of the year. He's in the top five in Clemson in, in about three different receiving categories. He's in only a red shirt sophomore, but the fastest receiver on the team. Third and one for Clemson. Howard Hall and Paul Caputo check into the backfield. Blunt out. They load up with the big fellas behind Cameron. They like to give the ball to the big fella in this situation, the fullback. And Harris stood up beautifully by Cannon at the line. Number I don't think, 18. 
I don't think he made it, Brent. But I'll tell you what I would do right now if I were the head coach. I'd go ahead for the fourth down play and see if I couldn't make it. You're, you have momentum, you're moving the ball. This series, as you said earlier, is critical to start out successful. Go ahead and take a shot. So he gets his pads down there, but Cannon, and then the rest of the people rally and stop him from making the first down. Fourth down and short. Cameron looking over at the sideline, the play coming out. The Tigers are 10 of 13 on fourth down conversions this season. With that rain falling here again in Orlando. They'll have to hurry against the clock. Harris. He may have reached out for it. He made Ryan it Perry holding on. Effort alone, El, has made that. The good penetration by Cal defense. They had him by the feet and the hips, but they couldn't get him down. I think they're going to have to measure it. You'll see what I'm talking about, second effort. Little penetration inside. See that Ryan Perry, number 55? He hits him up high. Now he's just picking up those legs over that stack right there, and we'll find out now if they made the first down. They didn't get the most favorable spot, did they, on that? No, but they still got it. I think Hatfield is a good motivator, and I think at halftime, he probably rallied the troops pretty good. Very religious guy. I know he didn't get mad at him or use any language that would be wrong, but he, did, he got after him, I'm sure. This is the 10th straight time, 10 straight years, that Hatfield has taken a team to a bowl game, either the Air Force Academy, Arkansas, or now Clemson, two straight years. First and 10, here's the end around. It's Lions with that speed looking for an alley. Well defended by Cal, I thought, that time. Lions, a talented sprinter, all-American in his high school days as a hurdler, got to the 39-yard line. See, they toss it deep. You can see Ryan's in the middle of your screen coming around, that good speed. Ryan's uncle was John Gilliam, the fine receiver from the Minnesota Vikings. Last year was 1977, showing his uncle's speed on that reverse. Second down and four. Here's Harris on that slant. He and Cannon are having some kind of duel. And now Clemson trying to get it together emotionally. This is a fired up Tiger team right now with about 20,000 of their fans here in attendance. They are loyal. It doesn't matter how hard it rains. You'll see these Clemson folks sticking here. Again, they're using the big splits, isolating one-on-one -on -one blocking, giving a big area for a defender to fill. Cal is going to have to get in those gaps, Brent, get in and get some penetration. Maybe line up and slant into them rather than line up in them. So a first down by that much. down just inside the 35-yard line for Clemson. Cameron steps away from the first defender, breaks a tackle, and is loose on the left. Out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Boy, he made the most out of nothing that time. You bet the Cal would almost be better off letting him throw the ball. It might be incomplete. Two big plays that he has made today have been on the same action. Sprint right, set up, nothing there, take off and scramble. Big running play. He has not been known for his ability to do this. This is something he's starting to mature at, and he's doing a good job right now and picking a good time to do it. He's rushed for 81 yards, 62 of them on one carry for a touchdown. First down for Clemson inside the Cal 15, opening possession here of the second half. Here's Blunt who slips. That wet surface now, remember, here in Orlando, and it made it a little difficult for him to get a grip. You know, uh, if you're running at people and making yards, going straight at them, don't go parallel. Stay after them, keep your linemen coming off the ball, hit those gaps. That's the best thing they've been doing. I'll tell you, though, Dick, one of the best moves that they've had has been that slant play yes. off the tackle with the fullback. Right at him, and he just keeps finding that crack. 
Howard Hall is now the fullback. It's a second and 14 for Clemson. The option and Cameron slips. They were in an he unbalanced slipped. line that time, Brent. He was trying to go out and run the option, and he slipped, as you said. See, these kind of things in their style of football, the coach does not like. But what's really <laughs> troublesome here is that a timeout has been called. When you're coming from behind, you're going to need all three. And Clemson uses one of them right here. Here in Orlando, that's from the airship Shamu. I guess we can call that a whale of a view from up there, can't we? SeaWorld, of course, the nation's premier marine life park. And a lot of folks have had a great time this week, spending some time over there at SeaWorld. Third and 16 for Clemson. Cameron straight back. Steps away, throws to Smith, who's open and overthrew him. Smith open in the end zone, and Cameron overthrew him, and Clemson settles for a field goal attempt here by Nelson Welsh. Boy, he was open. Chris Cannon, the corner number 18, bit on the post move. Then they turned and went back to the corner. He was alone. Anatu down on the ground, injured. And while the California medical staff tends to him, we'll take a break. Back in Orlando, Dick Vermeil with Brent Musburger. And it's a 37-yarder, Nelson Welsh here, Dick. And in the sequencing, they need three scores, so they badly need this field goal. He's four for seven this year from this distance. On its way. He's got it. Nelson Welsh with a field goal on Clemson's first possession of the second half. It's 27-13. The Tigers still alive. We're back in Orlando. 27-13. Clemson kicks a field goal. Suave with the ball on the tee for the Tigers. Chapman, on white Chapman at the 20. Down at the 34-yard line. Let's go down to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Once the rain started coming down on the field, it became extremely slippery. And we noticed a couple times that Deshaun Cameron was slipping. In the beginning of the game, he started out with the molded shoe here. The trainers wanted him to switch to the cleats. Normally, Deshaun Cameron says he doesn't like to switch shoes. But because there is absolutely no traction out there, he's going to go to the cleat. Cheryl, thank you very much. And Mike Pulaski and the Bears with their first possession of the second half. The hand to Russell White. And Russell White taken down by Ed McDaniel on a loss back to the 30-yard line, a four-yard loss. And Dick, my question to you, do you think Chester McLaughlin's had enough rest? He sent out that last series. All of halftime, he's been down for about an hour. Is the big fella ready to go now? Well, they'll have trouble getting warmed up, but I'll tell you, when he has his motor running, you just can't stop him. He just doesn't have the stamina to go 15, 12 uh, play drives and come in the next drive. Note that Pulaski removed the shield because it was been raining here. He doesn't have a windshield wiper on that baby. Showball. It'll be third and about four. Bodine coming from behind with the stop. So Pulaski was voted the MVP of this Golden Bear team by his teammates. 21 touchdown passes this year, a California record. He finished in the top five of both the Johnny Unitas and the Davy O'Brien voting. A firebrand of a leader. He has this team ahead 27 to 13. Need to get to the 44 for the first down. He's audibly now. See, they bluffed the coverage, and now he's changing the play. Pulaski sends Zomal down, hits him, and Zomal reaches for the first down. He really understands the offense. He saw them up pressing coverage. He thought they might be coming. He saw him back out. Then he audible to it first down tight pass. Good quarterbacking, good preparation by the quarterback coach. He's going to depend on it.
you'll see Pulaski, just a little movement of the head, pulled Bodine. Bodine's pretty excited. He wants to get after that guy. This one is going to wind up depending on where they team, spotted it after he reached here. for that first team down. Be ready on the sideline. You can hear that call on the California sideline. They want the punt team. Missed by that much, so things are starting out. And you can see Hatfield attempting to rally the troops. And remember, he's come close to blocking a couple of punts. And Pulaski, as he talked Bruce Snyder into going for it here, I believe he has. Oh, my gosh. He's still on the field. Well, this is a real gamble. Oh, you make baby. You're a hero. If you don't, that's the error of the ball game. So you risk turning the momentum all the way around. Pulaski himself. The middle meets him. They have to give him that. <laughs> no. Let's see where they spotted in relation to the markers. The spots have not been favorable so far in this game on either side. It's been consistent. Bruce Steider making a guts call. If he made it, he made it only by inches. Here come the chains. He made it. Less than a length. Ooh. I tell you, as a coach, after that kind of a decision, it's a lot easier to take that next breath. Wrap up, everybody! It, he'll, it'll, Coach Snyder will be bungee jumping after this one. <laughs> without the bungee, if he'd have missed that one, baby. Yeah, without it. First and ten. The toss is to White on a cutback against the green and a spinner still up down at the 42. 14 more yards for White. Concentrate here on the fullback to the left center of your screen, the lead blocker, as they toss the ball deep. Fullback to the left side of your screen. He has to make the block. He gets one out there. They get it turned out, stretches the hole, and they turn back up inside for a nice game. And number 15, O'Neal, coming back on the tackle, injured an ankle, and limped off. So Clemson's best defensive back, not on the field. Pulaski throws one over to White. No question that California's game plan now is to feature number four in the second half. Well, that's what they said they were going to do, but now Ron Dickerson, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, is changing up his coverages a little more. That time they were in a two deep, and they are up forcing those wide receivers to break their routes early. The other thing they're doing is disguising their coverages. Two-yard gain on that play leaves Cal with a second and eight. Here's Coach Dickerson right there. He's making the adjustments, trying to give Pulaski a tougher read. Whistle blew before the snap. Dead ball, false start, offense, still second down. Boy, we've had very few penalties. And I don't believe we've had a turnover yet either, have we? 11 rushes, 47 yards. Nine of 11 teams have failed to rush for 100 yards against Clemson. And Snyder trying to get that running game going here in the second half, leading 27-13. Big hole. White slips to the outside. A beautiful block by Zumwalt. And White is out at the 15-yard line. What a blocking job by Greg Zumwalt in this game as White runs for 31 yards. The key to this is the block by Eric Malum on the trap. Watch this. He pulls. He gets up. Good block turn there. Now watch him pull. Watch him kick up in there. There it is. There's the big hole. Good job. Now he gets the block downfield. That was the back that went in motion to the right of your screen. 78 yards rushing on the day.
unsportsmanlike conduct penalty falls on this play against California. Dead ball, non-contact foul, offense, first and 25. Woo. I think he just throws the ball up into the stands here. And you can't do that. Yeah. You cannot do that. Russell White tosses some fan a very costly souvenir. First and 25, high and incomplete. It's second and 25 from the 30. A big break for Clemson as White went out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Chester McLaughlin takes himself out. Well, that, that was an immature play by Russell Wright. And he, he has more poise than that and more understanding of the game. He knows he, he can't do that. Right now, Clemson's got to play for the screen. He's really got to be alert for the screen. Or let back check down. Uh, White, nothing going. And this is going to be third and 27. David Davis makes the stop. You go from first and 10 on the 15 to first and 10 on the 30 back there, that's a major move. That was a major signal over there by Coach Snyder. Like they might have something in mind in this situation. See if they can pull a rabbit out of their hat here. There it is, the Fumbaluski, they've got it. There was the signal short of the first down. Eric Mellum. We picked it up on the sideline when he went over and pointed to one of the student managers. They put the fumble ruski down. You know, and they also have to tell the official they're going to run that play, Brent. Say they can't, they can't fool the official. Take a look. You don't see this very often, fans. Watch it being executed. The ball right underneath the center's hand. Now watch. Snaps it up, puts it on the ground. Mullum, number 53, picks it up. There he goes around. Now he's picking up a block by Troy Ozine. He does a nice job blocking downfield. And there's Eric Mellon carrying the ball for the first time in his career. 34-yard field goal attempt by Doug Bryan as the result of that fumble ruski. Big moment in this game. He's curling it in and good. Doug Bryan kicks a field goal and extends California's lead. It's 30 to 13. There's still three scores ahead. Well, a reminder that coming up on Sunday, January 12th here on ABC, from the La Costa Country Club, the world's top will tee it off in the final round of the Infinity Tournament of Champions. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern time right here on ABC. Those will be the winners of the regular PGA Tour as well as the seniors, the only time this year that they come together. So in effect, we will have two championships decided for you on Sunday, January 12th. You know, that was really a big, big, big call to come up with that scene. He's not thinking of scoring a touchdown. He's just thinking of creating a situation for the field goal kicker to kick the shorter field goal, a higher, looking for that three point to get it. So the opponent, Clemson, needs the three plays to score, three scores to win it. Excellent coaching job here excellent, today excellent. by Bruce Snyder and the entire California staff. You can't say enough about what they have come up with here today. And we should hand out some kudos to our camera crew. That's a very difficult play to come back with. And frequently, you're just following the quarterback every which way and not sure we had it for you. So let's take one more look at it as Clemson trying to mount a rally yields a field goal as the result of this fumble ruski as the quarterback pulls away the ball put on the ground picked up by an offensive lineman who then swings to the outside that was Ozine blocking O'Neal and Malum gets it close enough for the field goal I think the last time we saw that play was the University of Arizona running that play a year ago early in the season against Illinois and they ran it in for a touchdown don't see it very often first and ten for Clemson Harris battles for three yards 
Ryan Perry has been very active defensively for the Bears. He really has. He's their most improved defensive lineman over the last couple of years, and he's made a big stride this late part of the season, and they really need him to make those kind of plays against a big offensive line like this. He's on Stacy Siggers, who's 6'4", 320 pounds, Brent. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Cameron, with plenty of time, fires one long. At the 30-yard line. Chris Cannon was there to help Ryan, who is almost able to get in that pretty nice and throwing ball. The ball was thrown like it ought to be out in front of him, so he has to stretch to make the catch. There it is. He's inside the corner. He's inside the safety. Wilson is inside there. Look at that. Good defense by Chris Cannon. Give him credit for making a nice play. This is the reason Chris Cannon's leaping ability becomes important there. See him leap like that, six foot eight inch high jumper in high school. California led this one 24 to three. Clemson since then has outscored them 10 to six, but it doesn't matter. Almost intercepted by Artis Houston. Really smartly played. Artis Houston is the fastest defensive back on the team. Also an outstanding student in high school and coming to California. Makes a very smart play there. They tried to use a hook inside and slide to the outside. They couldn't, just couldn't make the play. And Clemson forced the punt. The seventh punt of the game by Chuck Lynch. Brian Treggs with one touchdown run in the first half. At the 36. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Ty Gibson defending that punt. A six-yard return off a 40-yard punt. Legs driven out by Tyrell Gibson. Well, with that ceiling closing in, we may lose our airship Shamu here for the rest of the game. We certainly want to thank those folks for those wonderful pictures we had. That blimp floats so gracefully up there. I guess they're about a thousand feet above the stadium. I wouldn't want to do a bungee jump off of that baby. No, but your sidekick probably do it. <laughs> so thanks to Shamu. You know, there's a lot left in Cal's offense that we've seen him run in other games and on the practice field they haven't even used yet. The toss to Chapman. The hole. Good nine yards on that first down run. Brent Woodhall, the tight end, didn't get the defensive lineman or linebacker hook, but he kept him engaged, and that allowed Chapman to get around to the outside. Good job by Brent Woodhall. No substitute for speed, and Lindsey Chapman has it. Second and short, and you can look for Pulaski to take a free shot on a pass. He decides not to. Puts it in Chapman's hands, and Chapman runs for the first down inside the 45-yard line. Moves on tackling him, and California working a little bit on the clock. You know what's amazing is, is we sat for an hour and talked to Coach Snyder from Cal about his game plan and what he was going to do, and he's doing it. What's really amazing is how efficiently the game plan is working and that he said we'd come out in the second half, we didn't think we could run very much in the first half, but we'd make him chase, we'd wear him down, and then we're gonna control the clock in the second half and run the ball well. Gosh, what a great script he has written. Al Richard Al shaking, up. shaking up on the play. Al Richard was at our table at the Citrus Bowl luncheon the other day. What a nice young man. He's graduated from school already, going to graduate school. He started the, uh, the first three games of the season, then they moved Chester McLaughlin into the starting lineup, so he's been an alternate. Of course, with the Brents and Buckner not playing here, having been ejected early, he's been playing a lot in this football game. Very articulate, bright young man. California's record this year, nine and two, their best mark in 41 years. And there was some question about how many fans California would travel when they came to a bowl game. Well, some 7,000 Golden Bear loyalists purchase tickets and travel on down here to Orlando, many of them from Northern California, but a lot from the East Coast, as California and Penn State are in a bit of an argument, and that argument is, which one has the most living alums? Both schools have now claimed that with me this year. 
So I'll let the two, <laughs> Penn State and California, argue that one. Here's the toss to Chapman, looking for a cutback alley, and spins to the 37. An entirely different game plan here in the second half as a penalty flag comes down on the play. And when we finish here, you folks out in the Pac-10, I want to see how Washington does in its quest for a national championship against Michigan. The Rose Bowl is coming up next here on ABC. In the first quarter, Cal was able to rush. Dead ball, personal foul, defense, first down. So the ball has marched off inside the 25-yard line, first and 10. The Bears, you know, in that first quarter, Dick, California was held to minus 19 yards rushing. Since then, they have rushed for 120 yards. And I'll tell you this, when they've been able to rush for 150 yards in the last two years, they have won 13, lost one, and tied one. Important to keep running. This baby is 30-13. It's been Cal since the opening drive. Pulaski slips, throws, Dawkins dives, he's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Cal. Wonderful catch. Six foot four wide receiver being covered by a five foot eleven defensive back plus an athlete that can jump. He was a very fine track athlete. He gets it up high, makes him keep going. So he gives the receiver the opportunity to go out in front and make the catch. The receiver did a good job of keeping the ball inside him as well. A point added by Bryant. Well, California came in here with several big play performers, and all of them have scored touchdowns. Here is Dawkins with this touchdown catch, making like he is next year's Desmond Howard. Already, Russell White has run in for a touchdown, and Brian Craig's has returned a punt. The difference in the game is what we said back on top. California had the big play performers. You know, and we said too, Brent, that for Cal to be the winner today, their three superstars had to play like superstars. Pulaski, all right, and he's done it. Russell White, and now Sean Dawkins. And they are the three true All-American caliber offensive players, and they're all doing better what they do best. Boy, with this performance, you have really got to like Washington now. Pac-10 coming up big again at bowl time. You know, and I think this football team, the California team, has grown up from that losing experience at Stanford. We have not seen one flare of the negative things we saw in that ball game. Coach Schneider and the staff put that in proper perspective. He said he didn't want those kids to come in here today and play like Boy Scouts, but he said he wanted them to play tough and everything else, but none of the stuff that they did wrong in the Stanford game. And boy, have they done a good job. I think Clemson has to be shocked by what they've seen here today. Clemson's looked like they took a sleeping pill last night and they haven't woke up yet. Ryan. Alley. Penalty flag. I think the other thing that's been uh, really obvious here that Kent Bear and the defensive coaches Rod Marinelli and Don Henderson and Phil Snow uh, have done a great job of preparing that defense. I was concerned that the defense could hold up with uh, against that big front because the University of Washington moved the ball pretty well against them, getting up over 400 yards, and I figured this team might be able to do the same. That's Kent Bear right there, the fine defensive coordinator. Really an intense guy, and he, he generates that within his defensive squad as well. He speaks Japanese. Yes, he, he worked does. as a coach over in Tokyo. He's probably got some good friends in Tokyo. He probably called them up and asked them to scout Clemson for him when they were over there playing Duke. 
He's probably the only coach in America who could get an excellent scouting report on a team playing in the Orient. <laughs> the chancellor of the university who has meant so much to this football program. Oriental dropped by before the game. He's so excited. That is Cal Cap, Blue Blazer. What the good times roll for the Golden Bears. Cameron going long. That's interference. And it'll be first down for Clemson. That was Smith. And he was interfered with by Houston. It was obvious. Artis Houston did that. You'll see right at the end, he pushes him. Here he is moving inside out. See him reach there and put his hand in there like that. No, he can't do that. They're going to call it a 10-yard penalty. Dick, what's our friend, the chancellor's name? I wrote it down. Chang Lin Tien. And it was he fired up? Uh, huh? He I was tough. I asked him if he was nervous. And he said, no. Real quick, no. <laughs> he can really be proud of what his university is doing here today. I'll tell you this, you know, Bruce Snyder is operating on an extended contract, has a new contract that isn't signed. I think I, if I were the chancellor, I'd be at his house till morning, make sure he gets it signed. Forget and the house. I never let him off the sideline yeah. today because the phone is going to be ringing. Of course, I would insist they double the amount they're offering too. Oh, this is, I can't begin to tell you, when you look at the, uh, at the two programs, the facilities difference that you have in Clemson versus California, it's stunning. Cameron down at the 15 yard line. They are pumped. That's Big Monahan. Monahan's from Cardinal Newman High School in Santa Rosa, California. The other thing, Clemson hasn't looked like the real tough, hard-nosed team that, uh, that the image that they always bring to a ball game. But anyway, they haven't shown that today. To Blunt. Out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And actually, he didn't go out of bounds. Clock's still moving. He didn't make it. That's Ray Sanders who's held up well in that secondary. Yes, he has. He was an excellent baseball player in high school, actually drafted by the Kansas City Royals in the 18th round as a baseball player, elected to stay with football. See, this is just not Clemson's style of football. And, and when they're put in this situation, it's tough. Smith turns to the 45 and a first down. Barsala defended him after a 24-yard gain. Barsala's been all over the field since he didn't get to start the game, made a mistake, missed a practice, didn't start, but he's been all over the field since he's there. But that Terry Smith is, you know, he's just a redshirt sophomore, got a couple of years to go. He's going to be an outstanding receiver. He already is. He was first ring off ACC for Clemson this year. First down, handoff to Blunt. Blunt the ball carrier. To the 49-yard line. Boy, I tell you, the big fullback, Rudy Harris, that time went through, and did he get a good block. Ooh, penalty flag thrown back in the secondary. Something happened downfield on that play. I got on the elevator the other day in the hotel with three of these big uh, linemen from Clemson. I didn't think it was going to go up. <laughs> they were all 300 pounds. There's over 900 pounds of guys. Why don't you run around up to the other <laughs> elevator? <laughs> Look at the chest on him. He could inhale for a month. Look at that. That's John Harris. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. Dead ball. Oh. Personal foul. Offense. Both players ejected. Oh. Penalties offset. Catfield's upset. Wilson, I guess, is the one. That's David Wilson of Cal and Dwayne Bryant. Boy, that's a major Clemson. loss. 
that's a major loss for Cal. You bet. I mean, he is their outstanding secondary player. El Los Angeles City Defensive Player of the Year in high school. Is that Brian? Dwayne Bryant is out, friend. Ball at the 50. That's Don Pelham, the recruiting coordinator, talking to him. Boy, they'll miss him in there. Blunt battles his way for a tough first down. Good running. Ray Sanders trying to pick up some of that slack back there in the secondary. And it is a first and ten for Clemson here in the final two minutes of the third quarter. Eight of seven on the play. First and ten. Blunt leaves after that tough run and Derek Witherspoon into the game for Hatfield. Bubble, Cameron on it. Loss of a couple of yards. Cameron recovering the fumble. Just what the coach has said, if he gets off to a bad start, sometimes he doesn't recover although he did have that one sparkling 62 yard run for a touchdown in this game you know I'm not so sure is that they got off to a bad start that Cal got off to a great start yeah, the offense agree. wasn't even on the field that first series I agree you know but he did go over his first five right no question how about this uh, go Bears <laughs> Catch incomplete. Ryan is the intended receiver. And it's third down. Cal secondary people are, are covering and crowding the wide receivers, not too concerned with them about going deep. Now they've tried to go deep with a post pattern. They tried to go deep with a deep down the sideline pattern, but the, they're still crowding them. Cameron sprinting to the right. He'll keep it. Cameron on a keeper. Running for the first down marker. Out of bounds, just short of it. You can see that he does have that 4-5 speed. He turned that corner, and it was speed alone because Pursuit had good angles on him, but Wilbur and Jason Wilbur, number 39, just couldn't get to him. Stand here and get hit. See what I'm talking about here. He gets back now. I see he's going to sprint out here now. Here's Jason Wilbur, number 39. He's a fine athlete. He can really run. He couldn't get to him. Ball just inside the 35 yard line. Fourth and inches. Fourth and inches. Clemson trailing by 24 points. We'll go for it here. Right side of the offensive line for a Tiger first down. To have any chance at all, the defense would have to shut down a California offense that has been sparkling all day. And Clemson, you would think, would have to hit three two point conversions. Folks, yeah. you talk about it being uphill right now. Yeah, you bet. It's, it's, the other thing, Brent, see, Cal would have to help him by turning the ball over. Cal has 330 total yards of offense in the first three quarters that Clemson defense hasn't been hit like this this year we'll return after this message and a word from our ABC station Citrus Bowl Orlando Florida we start the fourth quarter and so far it has been an explosion by the Golden Bears of California they lead it 37 13 with 15 minutes left to play. Dick Vermeil, a splendid coaching job. Cameron rolling out here for Clemson. Gets one on one, an open man in the end zone. Incomplete. That was Smith defended by you know who, Chris Cannon. He's gotten it out of there just another step further down there. He might have been able to make this play. Cannon was there, but he didn't get in behind him, as you can see here. And it's underthrown and allowed Cannon to go ahead and help and get involved in that play. Keep him running as you can. Keep him running if you can. See, he had at least two steps on it. Second and ten. Over 
the middle to Gibson. Gibson to the 17-yard line and a first down for the Tigers. Very good call uh, by the offensive coordinator, Larry Menderhey. He doesn't tie it in. Ty Gibson doesn't get the ball many times. Only 12 times this year, 13 times last year. So there's a real surprise element when the tight end catches the football. To have any chance at all, Clemson must strike quickly and then get a turnover, you would think. Cameron rolling. He's got one-on-one -on -one again, and he overthrows Smith. Did you see the hit that Jarrett Willard put on him? Number 45. Dick, the, uh, the question I would have about the Clemson passing attack, they take one man out there, and they don't give him much of an alternative in that end zone. He's got to get it to Smith, or it's not going to happen. It's a one-man pattern situation there, but take a look at that. That's a rip shot right there. Jarrett Willard, the first string freshman All-American, making that play. He, too, played in the, for the South team in the Shrine game. They have some good football players on this team, obviously. Well, California showing everyone that it wasn't the real team they saw and that lost to Stanford. Wow. Blitz. Ball is intercepted by California. Mac Travis. Oh, did they come off the corner that time? It was Ray Sanders. That was an attempted shuffle pass, which is a forward pass if it's incomplete. But he caught it in the air. It is a intercept, interception, as you called. The first turnover of the Citrus Bowl. The Huskies and the Wolverines probably out there with their pregame warm-ups along about now, getting ready for that Rose Bowl game that's about to unfold in Pasadena. We'll be sending you along to Keith and Bob as soon as this one's over. Here it's California on the toss to White. He has now gained better than 80 yards against this defense. And remember, we go back to the top of the broadcast. It has been 38 games since a running back rushed for better than 100 yards. And in the last 72 games, only two players have done it. The last one I refer to is Martin of the Tar Heels back in 1988. But Russell White with a chance, and there's an injured Clemson player down on the field. I can't remember being around a coach who gave us a plan in which he said, what we're going to do is we're going to throw, because I don't want them to see my running attack until the second half when they're a little tired. I think I can get some business early. I got some big play guys. I'm outmatched physically. And in a second, I'm going to come back. I'm going to run hard. And I think then they'll be looking for something. I can't remember a coach having a game plan unfold as he told me like yeah, this. Remember what he said? He said, it, remember he said he talked to Bill Walsh. And Bill Walsh yeah. said, hey, don't be stubborn. Don't try to beat him physically first. Keep that ball moving around and, and make you chase. Speaking of stubborn, now that yeah. oh, is yeah. stubborn, folks, oh, right there. Tub team. No, oh, that one has to. Look at that guy. You know, the thing I, I think know, the just, offensive uh, coaches from Cal have also reminded their players, keep the ball in bounds. Keep the clock running. Let's get out of here. Well, I'll tell you, is he going to be a popular figure right now as far as some job opportunities are concerned? Russell White, again, I want to mention that there was a hint of a rumor regarding Arizona State and Bruce Snyder prior to the start of this game. Snyder would have none of that rumor business. He was concentrating on, on getting Cal ready. But if you go back and look at his record, he was very successful up at Utah State and now at California, two schools where it's difficult to put together winning programs. And when you find coaches who are successful in those environments, you know you've got someone who can get the job done for you. Plus, you add that pro experience to it, and you really go, you know, go another level. You know, nobody's done the job he's done at Cal except Mike White years ago. Oski fires short and defended. It'll be fourth down at the 1247 mark. Ashley Shepard. Ashley Shepard. This offense came into the ball game averaging 446 yards a game, averaging 36.9 points. It was 1975. You have to go that far back. Do you find an offense that compared? And that was Mike White's offense at 458 yards a ball game. That's a long span. Today, they're at 339. Noonan's first punt of the second half.
Clemson will come after it. They've been close a couple of times with Easton. Stevens. Stevens taking the punt. To the 31 yard line. It's to the 31 yard line. The final 12 36 to unwind here in the Citrus Bowl. Defense led by number 30, Brian Watkins. With Dick Vermeil, I'm Brent Musburger, and I put the burden on Dick when I said he told me that he thought Clemson was going to win. Actually, we are both shocked. We thought that the Tigers would dominate this game, both sides of the line of scrimmage, and that would be the difference. But it has been the big play, folks, of California, and a superb coaching job that has been the difference in here today. As Cameron drills Smith, Cameron's first down. So Brent, Terry it wasn't so much that I didn't think Cal could win. I just was around that Clemson hotel for the last three days, and I looked at all these big, strong guys, and they had he more of them than Cal did by Buckle. far. Plus the second unit that rotates in there and plays a lot. So I felt that might wear down the the Bears. The opposite has happened. The Bears having a wonderful season this year. This would move their record to 10 and 2. Uh, Derek Witherspoon. Witherspoon. Blunt out right now with a hip pointer. California's first New Year's Day Bowl since the 59 Rose Bowl. Stanford was in a bowl game. UCLA was in a bowl game. California is the only one playing on January 1st. Except for Washington. Well, that's right. Excuse me. I recall they're in the same me. conference. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> California, count those folks up with the Northwest. Oh. I mean, come on, they're my friends up there. Yeah, you bet we count them. <laughs> We've had a few of their games over the last two years. They've been a great team for two years, and we'll be very good next year. Uh, I can remember a year ago we were saying that they were the best team then. Yeah. And then UCLA showed up. I games happen in college football that I still yeah. never understand. You, how you know, happen. another team that's capable of surprising today is Nebraska. Oh, really? Yes, they are. They're capable. Should I listen to you again? No, you have to listen to me, but they are capable of... There's Cameron firing, incomplete. Pass intended for Tyrone Gibson, incomplete. 37 to 13, Dick, and, uh, you know, this Cal team, I do want to go back at another point. I remember when you and I left after that wonderful Washington-California game that was played in Berkeley, they had those terrible, devastating fires up there just outside of uh, Berkeley and Oakland. Well, the athletic department, incomplete out of bounds, the athletic department at the University of California donated $100,000 to that Oakland fire relief fund. And I just thought that was a very nice gesture. I remember reading about it, I think it was the San Francisco right. Chronicle, the week after that horrible fire out there. Some of the players lost their apartments and their cars and that. One thing I want to say about the uh, about the California program, I mean, here's one that folks didn't think would ever get turned around. I thought it was an yeah. academic yeah. institution. <laughs> Maybe Northwestern can study what happened there. Huh? There's Cameron firing complete for the first down. Finally got it to Smith. That one-on-one -on -one coverage against Chris Cannon on the outside. I think they're giving him a bad spot there. I think he caught the ball beyond that point that they're marking it. Oh, he did. Going no huddle. Oh, now they call a timeout. Fourth and short. Timeout Clemson. Cameron coming over to the sideline to talk to Coach Hatfield. Well, as we wind down the final minutes of this Citrus Bowl, thanks to Chuck Rowe, he's the executive director, and Carol Monroe, she really runs the show down here for all the hospitality extended to the ABC crew. We've still got 11 minutes, but for all intents and purposes, this baby is over. I think one of the unsung heroes is, you see Zomalt there in your picture, number 23? His brother right there, number 28, Greg Zomalt. Not only did he score the first touchdown, but folks, I want to tell you, he blocked as well as any fullback as I've seen this year in college football. Time after time, he came back against these tough Clemson defenders and got the job done. And all too often, we don't give the blockers their due. And for McLaughlin, there's the big fellow right there. <laughs> He's bigger than the last time we saw him. Cameron. Firing complete on first that's down, and that's Witherspoon, the running back. And again, it's Ray Sanders, number eight, and he's played a fine game, and that's secondary for Cal. So many of these Cal Bears have stood up today. 
Wow, what a performance. You know, Snyder's done a good job of coaching, but he's done an even a better job of evaluating which kids to recruit. Some of these kids were not highly recruited. Yes, they had the Shrine kids, but he's, he's evaluated some kids that were rated marginal, and they weren't the All-Americans and all that stuff, Brent, but they've come and they performed very well. Now, everybody knows how fun Dick I have been through the years of the Clemson athletic program. I've made a lot of trips down there to Clemson, and I just think they've got some of the most wonderful facilities in the country. It gets tougher in the ACC next year. <laughs> Perry comes blasting across. Perhaps he was drawn off. It gets tougher in the ACC because Florida State will play a full schedule in the conference, and there's an early meeting between Clemson and Florida State in Tallahassee next fall. It'll be a dandy. Well, it'll take them a while to get used to defensing these kind of, uh, you know, wide open attacks. Not that Nate Duke throws the ball real well, and other people too. But uh, the whole Defense. total package. Third down. And it, I, it may not only be that. It's just, you know, they came down here a week, spent a week. Maybe it's a week too long. You know, maybe they should evaluate that. They came down to stay a week in Clearwater and, and then came here and worked. Maybe, maybe they're better off staying at home for that week. Short on third down. Well, this is the day that they talk about the national championship, the AP rankings. Miami number one, then Washington, Florida, and Michigan still in the hunt. It will not leave those four, you wouldn't think. Now, as far as the coaches are concerned, Miami and Washington are tied, although the Hurricanes received three more first place votes. A year ago, Georgia Tech won the coaches' ranking, and Colorado won the other one. Anatu comes blasting through with the sack of Cameron on fourth down back at the 40 yard line. It's Cal's ball. Nine and a half minutes to go. They came 7,000 strong, the Cal Bear fans, and some of them are hanging in there right till the end. As for the Clemson fans, they get the front row down there. Russell White. And he's closing in on 100. He's over 85 yards. That gives him 16 carries for 88. Nine and a half minutes to go. This is the most points allowed by Clemson since 1984 when they were beaten 41 23 by Maryland. That was back in November. Toss, they're going to try to get White 100 yards. And Clemson's going to try to hold him off. Rob Bodine. Things are definitely going backwards for this team. <laughs> Mom, this wasn't supposed to happen this way. And meanwhile, California stake claim to an early recruit over there on the sideline. Right now the score is 37 to 13. Get up here Go and take Bears. my job. <laughs> Way to go, young man. Up first, huh? Third down. <laughs> the fire on that little slant running that screen back to the middle. Rob Bodine chasing down Jeff Jones in a first down for California at the eight minute mark. And all you Washington, Michigan fans, that one's coming up here soon. The Rose Bowl is next. And already the Pac-10 with another big win on this bowl day. You know, a lot of people said the Pac-10 had a weak conference or Washington didn't have to play anybody and all that kind of stuff. But the Pac-10's holding up pretty good today. I'd say and so. And yesterday. I'd say. Their only loss was in the closing seconds when Clay broke that brilliant punt return for Georgia Tech. And then Tech pulled it out with a two-point conversion. Penalty flag on this one. This one will come back. We talked about the, uh, the coaches' rankings and the writers with the Associated Press. Always a third ranking that I enjoy looking at because it frequently is really different. And this is a computer ranking that the New York Times brings out every week. And the one school that may have been undervalued by the writers and the coaches is Nebraska. The computer which rates strengths of schedule. And I would point out that Oklahoma played brilliantly in that win over Virginia. 
certainly upgrades the Nebraska record although they have lost that fullback for that game tonight against Miami but they are ranked fifth by the by the computer although I should note they did have Virginia number 10 so maybe the computer doesn't know everything so <laughs> I'll tell you what, I give up. All right? Yeah. I surrender. Yeah. You still have to line up and play. And and statistics to only give you an indication of what's been going on. It doesn't tell you what's going to happen that given day. Hey, how about this, huh? What up? Yeah, let the good times roll for this team. Clemson battling away against White. White, the ball carrier. There's a number we haven't called much today. LeVon Kirkland, LeVon number 44. Kirkland I was with him Kirkland. yesterday. He was walking through the lobby late evening. He was eating a banana. First time, I guess, quick energy and that kind of, and broccoli. Raw broccoli. Did you say yesterday? Yeah. Didn't know the game was today? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the deal here, you know? Maybe they forgot. Yeah. He's going to be a very high draft choice in the National Football League. He's draft. a nice He's young great. man. Yeah, he can play. See, Cal did some things to help protect against those kind of rushers, too. They turned the tackles oh, he brought, out on him a lot. He brought one to the game today. Yeah. He had his energy and his calcium. Second down. Now here's White. And off the White. I'll ask Roger Riley, our stats guy, just how close he is. He's four yards away from getting 100. Syracuse beating Ohio State and the baseball score from Dallas is now 7-2 still. Penn State scoring first on Tennessee. You know Penn State's another team Brent that we saw late in the year and then early in the year and they were really a much better team late in the season. Very fine team. So White off on that side. Not in for this third down. Take off that orange. Take off the orange. 5.53. Good defense. Really a, a good job of defense by Clemson that time. They read the screen. Arthur Bussey, number 86, came out there, Brent. He had no one to throw the screen to, so he just grounded the ball. But Arthur played that awfully well. You know what was a what was a big play in the second half? I'm not sure they could have come back all the way. But that fumble Ruski that set up that field goal, field goal that matched Clemson's early field goal was a big play when you look back on the game. You know, and so many times we've gone to do ball games, and we've done enough of them this year, and people give us their game plans and all these great plays, but they don't use them in the game because they get exactly. afraid to call them. Today exactly. they called them. Yeah, I always figured that, okay, I'll listen to the game plan, and then the game will start. Yeah. There's a punt inside the five. Down, I believe it was in the end zone. So it'll come out on the 20 yard line. Five and a half minutes to go and then we'll switch out to Pasadena for the war between Washington and, and Michigan. That's Todd Stucy, number 75 there. Curtis Whitley there, number 64. I know that... Uh, that's Terry Donahue, the fine football coach at UCLA's neighbor. Here he is playing right tackle for Cal. <laughs> that would grab you a little bit, wouldn't it? Fullback for Clemson. Rushes on the field a little bit late, Rudy Harris, and a uh, penalty flag comes flying here. Penalty flag. Go down there and tell the officials to keep this one moving, that our audience wants to see Washington, Michigan coming up. <laughs> you know, Dick, I, I must tell you that I really couldn't decide one way or the other on the Rose Bowl, but having watched California, I really like There's Washington. There's no flag. No flag. Good. Let's go. Let's play. Come on. <laughs> Good. Let's, let's go. Let's shove this one along, lads, and let's get out to Desmond Howard and that bunch out there. Let's watch Impman and Skrepanek and what a war that's going to be. Cameron slips down. Donna too was there. Good. Speaking of the Big Ten though, Indiana turned in a nice win last night over uh, over Baylor. The Dun Dunbar is as good a running back as I've seen all year. Maybe the best we've seen all year. He makes things happen and he can dominate when there when there aren't many blocks. He can still advance the football. And by the way. What happened to the, another team that you and I thought was a lock in bowl time, Iowa? And you have to give that Ty Detmer and the crew, uh, you give them credit. Cameron, high and incomplete. 
Well, I think that was another excellent coaching job because Brigham Young was young and inexperienced when the season began, and they obviously got better as time wore on. And they got out of the tough schedule, the Florida State, Penn State type teams, and got into their regular conference, and they grew, and they got better, and by the end of the year, they could go back and play the big guys. Next year, the Big Ten runner-up comes right here to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Good call. We'll be here. And the folks are going to love it. The third place team goes to the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. Jim Delaney has lined up two excellent cities. Orlando and San Diego. If you can't go to the granddaddy folks you might as well come to one of these two. You can't get any better sight than Orlando as Cameron stays in bounds and that clock continues to run Cameron away now. Keeper. Cameron has battled. The best thing he's done today is run the football. You know you know who's going to have a big Rose Bowl. Fourth down. Young wide receiver by the name of Mario Bailey. Well, he's got a point to, uh, you know, he said he's as good as the other guy. You know, he's made that point. And he is outstanding. He's an outstanding player. Fourth down. 4.20. And here's the punt. We'll take a break right now, and we'll come back. We'll keep this baby running while you're away for a short time. It is a dry day in Southern California, and we're standing by for the 78th playing of the Rose Bowl game. Matching the Washington Huskies, champions of the Pac-10, you'll see them today as the visiting team, even though they live out here in the West, against the champions of the Big Ten, Michigan. It is a game that'll have bearing on what happens when the pollsters go to the ballot for the final time because the Huskies are undefeated and the Wolverines have lost just one. So as soon as the issue is settled in Orlando, we'll be here in Pasadena ready to go to work. Again, Brett. Keith, thank you very much. We look forward to joining that one. And here, Russell White has done it. He has broken 100 yards, and the first time a runner has done that against this Clemson defense since 1988, a string that lasted for 38 games. So 2.20 to go, 37-13. The issue long ago settled in this one, and just as soon as they get going out there in Pasadena, we'll send you along out there, even though we might miss a couple of plays down here in Orlando. We'll still come back and give you all the the final stats and everything. But right now, Russell White has broken 100 yards. Cal leads 37-13. Clemson's string of five straight bowl victories is over. Beaten for the first time in six years and beaten soundly by the California Bears. They did it with their big play performers at their best. And they're going to punt it back now to Clemson here at the 214 mark. Stevens lets it go and it'll be down inside the five yard line. When it's going well, it goes well for everybody. Noonan. Isn't it? Huh? Noonan, excellent, excellent punt by Chris Noonan. <laughs> the first touchdown in this game for Cal was scored by Greg Zomal on the opening drive of the game. The Golden Bears went 76 yards in 10 plays. It was 7-0. And it was 10-0 on Brian's first of three field goals. Brian Triggs up at the 17-0 on a 72-yard punt return. And for all intents and purposes, this uh, baby was history. Number five, Jimmy McLeese. Then in the second half, Coach Bruce Schneider turned loose his runners, and they have done the rest. Oh, avoiding the safety is Jimmy McLeese, one of the backup quarterbacks for Clemson who has come on now to finish this game up. So there's the coach who attended Oregon, and before that, he played at Citrus Junior College. So how about that? He comes down here to the Citrus Bowl and turns in a big win with the California Golden Bears. He was a fullback at Oregon, one of his assistant coaches. He handled the defense today. Kent Bear. You know, when a head coach does a good job and the team reflects it game day, the entire staff did a good job. His entire coaching staff not only today, the entire year. I think I see the chancellor down there with a new contract right behind him. They get him locked up. Pass. 
pass is picked off at the 29-yard line. Intercepted by California. Watch Daryl Brown snap this one up. Trying to hit the seam pattern down there in the zone, and here comes Daryl right up over the top. Take it away from him right there. Here's Snyder. Winding up the year with a 10 and 2 record. That's the best mark at Cal in 41 years. John Dawkins, number 86, the big, big playmaker. Hey, Dick, there's some guys by the name of Pappy Waldorf and Jackie Jensen and Les Richter and all that gang, Joe Roth. They'd be awful proud. You are watching these guys here today. You know that? You bet. I think all Cal alums are proud. You know, they, they really took the heat after that Stanford game. The media in Northern California really got after the Cal football team. Justifiably, Justifiably so, by Justifiably the way. so. I, of course, it'll be a 180 or 360 degree turn for this performance. Oh, yeah. There's Pulaski with his fiance. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense. There's Tracy, they will be married in June. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, we still caught you. I thought she was the trainer down there. <laughs> So the final minute 51 running off on a California victory. Awfully happy for these young men from Berkeley and the way they put this program back together. And for Clemson, well, there'll be better days ahead. One thing they might want to do next year when they go to a bowl is wear orange. <laughs> and I'm still coming. I still love the SO Club. I haven't given up on it. There's a deflected ball that's finally caught by a lot. Little volleyball going on now. A hundred yard day for White. Says he's coming back, and that would be the smart thing to do, as it is for almost every young man who wants to come out and play in the National Football League. Stay in school and mature mentally and physically. There are just a few Barry Sanders in this world. There's a toss now to Tyrone Edwards. He's supposed to be a good one. Yeah, you know, they have another one, uh, another running back there right there at school. That's not too bad there, Richard. You and I have just finished 30 football games of this that's calendar eight. year. That's, okay. that's a record. I'm going to miss you as I go off to golf. I wish you good will and the, uh, lots of luck with the World League. And uh, it's been fun. we got an opportunity here to thank some very special people who have meant an awful lot to our program this year. We get ready for the Rose Bowl. Our executive producer, Jack O'Hara, he's done a real high-class job with this operation. Coordinating producer Bob Goodrich. He'll be calling all the shots out in Pasadena coming up. Today's game was produced by Kim Belton, the Stanford grad. Kim, as usual, great working with you here and directed so capably by Drew Esikoff. Drew and Kim and all the families of both Happy New Year. And our TD, our technical director, Doug Schmidt. I don't think Dougie pulled a bad button all year long. Did he, Dick? No, he didn't. We had a great crew. Our associate producer, Jimmy Ressler. Our associate director, Dick Buffington. Our booth coordinator, Valerie Fischler, she kept this crew together all Tuck season long. Yeah, did a good yeah, The food wasn't bad that she'd bring in at halftime either. And Doug Schiffler, he never missed a commercial down there on the sideline. They had the red flag dropped all year long. I just hope this whole gang has a great 1992. And of course, we had so many other people like Rick Abbott, Margaret Schaefer. Margaret was the rookie of the year down there, folks. Our computer stats, Brian Gordon and Mark Loomis. I'm going to have to learn some things from Loomis. He can play golf. He's pretty good. <laughs> Brian Mogelson, he was also helping us. So that's our team, as I wish them Happy New Year. And of course, uh, my daredevil, Mr. Bungie Cord, Jimmy Tubbs. 
We call him hands up here in the booth, folks. He doesn't just point at a number. He waves six signals at me. <laughs> so happy New Year to all the families back home, too. And of course, the stars of always are the cameramen. And we've had some of the best working with us here at uh, ABC all season long. We bring this one down, and now we get ready for that Rose Bowl. Always put on the rain gear. He's with us in the World League. Oh, yeah, they saddle up in that end zone. There's those New York Giant fans. And a couple of these guys have given up smoking today. And stick with it, guys. That's the New Year's resolution by a couple of our cameramen. Good luck on that. Washington and Michigan do up next on ABC. And then we'll watch the Fighting Irish against uh, Florida. Doug Bowling, number 48, getting one of the final calls on the year for Clemson. Michael Davis on the stop. A 24 point victory. Remember to join me again. Coach Hatfield there. You know, uh, Brent, uh, nobody's immune to this kind of football game as a coach. You know, I've been there. I know how it feels. I know how it hurts. It's more fun on the other side. <laughs> I'd say. 24. Troy Ozine, so many of those linemen for Cal did such a great job today. There's the pass, and it's intercepted. So here comes the exclamation point. He's the fastest man on the team. Artis Houston. They should have gone to the lateral play. This baby's over. Let's send you to the Rose Bowl. For Dick Vermeil and Cheryl Miller, I'm Brent Musburger. Happy New Year, everybody. Congratulations to California. Coming up on ABC Sports, it's the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Undefeated Washington takes their shot at the national title as they take on fourth-ranked Michigan next. The Florida Citrus Bowl has been brought to you by Lexus and the new ES300 Sports Sedan. By Interstate Batteries, now serving you with over 200,000 dealers across the U.S. and Canada. By McDonald's, getting more for your money. That's McDonald's today. And by Tylenol Cold. Nobody cares for your cold like Tylenol Cold.